What's going on, everybody? Hello, how you guys doing today? This is Moz coming to you with another episode of Moz's Toy Box, aka Moz's Toy Photography Talk. And uh, thank you for getting on that, Max. Appreciate it. So uh, we're expecting uh, Harry, aka Cinema Toygrapher. He should be popping in any minute. He's having a few technical difficulties, a few glitches, mind you, with uh, his audio. So uh, we'll have him soon. I want to give a shout out to Noble Young. Uh, to Kothri, uh, let's see, OG fan, Max Geekdom, the Don Prime. What's going on, guys? What's going on? So today's episode, although Harry doesn't know this yet because I haven't really even had a chance to confer with him, today's episode is about image composition, and that is a huge part when you're setting up a shoot for your uh, your photography. Any photography it doesn't have to be limited to just toy photography, but any photography, your composition is critical. If you just put a picture, a figure like straight on in the camera and you're shooting straight at it, it's going to say a lot less than if you took the, mo the time to maybe change the angle of the camera, change the angle from which you're shooting so that the, your, your subject is not necessarily center frame, maybe camera right or camera left. Um, all these small little details are huge for trying to convey a message in your pictures. All right. So. Man, I wish Harry was here, because by this point, I'd probably pass it to him. That's okay. He'll be here soon. Uh, Mike Halls, what's up? Uh, Don Prime. And yeah, all right. So <clears throat> why don't we just break into uh, my latest shot from today? We'll do that, and uh, we'll just start with that there. We'll, we'll go right with that. Let me, uh, I'm opening the wrong app, apparently. Because the app I wanted to use is already open, and I've just opened another one because I are smart. Let's see, let me close that because we don't need that one. We need the other one open. Doo -doo -doo. All right. So if you haven't been paying attention to my Instagram today, we uh, posted a picture of this guy. I dug this guy out. He has been just put away for the longest time because his outfit's ripped, and it's not fun to shoot when you have a figure that is worth as much money as this is now worth and its costume is ripped because the costume is made out of some cheap pleathery material, at least the part that ripped on him. Um, before we get into that, though, let's go back to this. So this is the uh, Art Figures Dread AF-15, and uh, here's a good example of the ripped costume. See right here? Both, both arms like that, just for posing them in this pose. Uh, the costume ripped like that. And this was like day one or two of me having him. So it's sad. I don't pull him out too often, but uh, he's a great looking figure. I need to find him a new under jacket because he's got this straight black pleather jacket on the, you know, on the underside. And then he's got the bulletproof vest thing here on the top. So I need to find the jacket goes underneath that. that that's a whole, that's a story for another time. Uh, let's see. So We'll go back to my, let's remove this, move in the studio. All right, let's add this back to the stream. Let's talk about this guy. All right, let's, uh, let's get this just dialed in and let's take a look at it. Let's break it down. So as you see, the figure, the, his center mass is center frame here, but your focal points start drifting over to camera left, right? And of course, your other focal point is the background. And that's camera right. So nothing that you're really supposed to keep your eye, eye on is really center frame. And you do that for a reason, because you want to lead the eye into your said direction. You want to lead the eye so that it follows the story that you're trying to tell. So if you have it center framed, you're going to put this thing, say dread, say I had him just straight up and down center frame. You're going to put him as the focal for the entire story. Anything else that you've noticed in that picture is kind of an afterthought. It doesn't seem like it's part of your narrative. It's just there. It's in the background. Um, one of the other things I've done, let's see, that's Harry. All right, he's joining. Sweet. So one of the other things I've done is, uh, you know, we've tilted the camera a little bit. Now, I'm doing this to kind of give you an idea because when you got a vertical frame, your height is limited. So what I've done is basically stretched out his height by tilting the camera. Let's bring Harry in, though, real quick. Harry, what's up, man? Welcome. Hey, how's it going? Oh, good. Oh, we can hear you and everything. You. We're Hang going great. Sec. We're talking about image composition today. 
Cool. And, Sounds uh, good. How that's a key factor in what we're doing. And I was going over this image composition because I was kind of a loss while you were troubleshooting. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, my yeah. mic, for some reason, just didn't want to work. And then uh, all of a sudden it started working. So I'm like, okay, well, that's just weird. But yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's okay now. That is awesome. That is awesome. Yeah. Cool, cool. Um, so what I was talking about here is the use of the camera tilt and the fact that Dredd himself is not precisely center frame. In fact, he's split between camera left and right because of the camera tilt. Mm -hmm. um, did you want to go over your thoughts on that real quick? Because I've been talking for a minute and I know you haven't uh, yeah, been here. Yeah, I, uh, I didn't hear what you were saying in the beginning, but um, yeah, I mean, just having like a slight tilt can add so much to the image. It just, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't really know what else to add, really. Okay. Well, right. well then I'll continue what I was doing. On. Yeah, so yeah, for sure. Part, part of the reason for the camera tilt is a, to kind of just throw it up a little bit, you know, just, just kind of give a little chaos to your straight shot. The other thing is to make him look taller because he's your hero. Your hero shot, even though you got the bad guy and even comic book artists, they usually make the bad guy bigger. But he's this is a background bad guy. He's not foreground. If he was a foreground, we would make him bigger. But right now we're, we are looking at the hero. This is a heroic moment. And so we're just trying to enlarge him a little bit without doing any kind of Photoshop or anything to like just stretch him out. So one of the good ways to do that, to give him more, uh, 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 what's the word I'm looking for, Harry? Um, uh, just more <laughs> focus, I guess. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll just take that and run with it. All right, yeah. <laughs> just to give him a bit more oomph, we've, we've got it tilted a little bit, you know, so that A, he's not sitting directly in the middle of the frame. B, we're not giving too much credence to the background because this is something that's stalking him. This is something that's not technically there yet see if we've got him kind of bulk it out because of our 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 field blur here or well our depth of field yeah. um so he's something that that's coming we see it coming as the person seeing it but we're with the hero and right now the hero is the hero and he's not in mortal danger just yet so he's larger than life he's the hero um that sounded good right right yeah no that, that makes sense you know like yeah, i was saying sense. with you know right. with focus you know just Doing whatever you know with camera tricks, depth of field, just to make it so that the you know the main focus is the hero. So, I could have I could have opened up the depth of field and put them both into focus. You know, I could have gone to like f twenty two or something that would have put them both yep. into focus. Um, there's a couple things that you fall short on when you do that though. A, yeah, you take a lot of light. you take a lot. Well, yeah, you, you yeah. take a lot of tension out of the shot though. You, you leave no mystery to it whatsoever as far as your, your uh, image composition goes. But yes, you need a ton more light when you're shooting a photograph at something like F22. I mean, these lights that I'm using, in order, to, in order for this to work on him, to get that light for the whole shot, I need a ton of these. I need like yeah. probably 10 of these lights, and they need to be right up on them, max brightness, yep. just so it doesn't get darkened out. So. Yep. Or you can, you know, bump up the ISO, but then you get grains and you don't really yes. want that. So. Yes. Uh, a great example of me bumping up the ISO was this one. It's a very similar shot, mm -hmm. actually. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, I in fact, when I when I made this shot today, I was thinking of this shot because I was like, I made this wall with this crack. I'm going to use this wall with this crack, right? Mm -hmm. So let's have something else dock my character. But in this case, I wanted my Predator more in focus so you could actually tell it was a Predator. Yep. Yep. Um, the Terminator, he's he's actually really easy to, to, to pull focus, even with that field blur, or the uh, depth of field, because he's a brighter character. He's going to reflect yeah. those lights. He's got the light up eyes. Very true. So Very recognizable too. Yeah, recognizable everything. But with this shot, um, I needed to pump up my ISO. And if you look at it, I don't know if it's translating well on camera here, but there's yeah, a lot I of grain yeah. in the shot. I can it's, see the grains, especially around the Predator. Yeah, a lot yeah. of grains. Yeah, there, there you go. There, this is zoom in. That's all grain. I, I tried to reduce, but my ISO was through the roof, and this is one of yeah. the reasons why you don't want to use or play with that setting more than you have to. Um, but back to this shot. This is a nice shot. I like. I actually like this shot. I like it. Yeah, I saw that earlier. I'm like, wow. Um, Not skipping this out figure, on this at all. This figure is 600 bucks now. Easy all day. Um, I bought it for two, but okay. they don't make him anymore. Yeah. He's third party. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. Let's see what's going on in the chat real quick. Um, That's, if you have uh, any that... comments, I'm going to read the chat for a second. If you have any comments, yeah, I was wondering. He doesn't have the uh, the cow urban likeness though, right? That's just basically he, like he a, does a from bit. 
angles. I mean, it's not spot on, but uh, let me, let me, all right, we're talking about him now. Hold on. Where's my <laughs> mouse? Oh, it's way over there. It's, I'm like looking over here on the screen. Um, he can end up looking like Carl Urban. I'm just, I don't know if he's at the right angle to do it. Um, but okay. Come on, come on, work with me, camera. <laughs> All right. There we go. Never once the problem with this, this method is that I can't see what, what I'm doing. But oh, That's that's true. <laughs> um, but yeah, I can see a little bit. Yeah, it's it's not spot on, but it works. You know, it, mm -hmm. it, it can work. And especially with that face he's got on. Yeah, that, that mouth. <laughs> so, but, um, <clears throat> But anyway, enough about him. Expensive figure now, though, because I was just looking him up to see if I can find another jacket for him since this jacket's ripped mm -hmm. up. Oh, uh, okay. But, uh, yeah, I haven't shot this guy in a while. Mm -hmm. So I went ahead and I used my, my foam wall that I made, and there's another one that I made behind the other guy just to give it layers in the shot. So utilizing these backdrops, yeah, you can put just a backdrop, you know, a printout or whatever, but three-dimensional backdrops, I, there's nothing to substitute for them, really. I mean, it plays with the light in the, that you're using for the entire shot, and it can add its own life to it. So if you can't, of course, use, you know, physical three-dimensional props, then, you, you know, you have other options. But, you know, like, like for example, on this, on this wall here, I mean, because this is cut out, I'm getting – this isn't so much paint. This is, this is the shadows. Yeah. Shadow, um, natural shadows. I mean, there, you can see some of the paint up here where I'm trying to get it, but mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, so three dimensional props, great must. Yeah. Um, just the fact that it interacts with your light just makes the whole difference. Yes, if you have you know just a picture, it won't react to the light, so it's just gonna look kind of flat and kind of fake looking. But if you're utilizing pictures like that, you want to actually have them far enough out of your depth of field so that they start getting a little bit more bokeh out. So they're not exactly you don't want them right up on your you wouldn't want to use like a, a cardboard cutout to yeah. to to simulate this wall that I'm using exactly. right here behind him. It would look like a printed up mm -hmm. wall. It wouldn't have any depth to it yep. and uh, it just wouldn't look realistic. So you'd want to move that back a couple inches at least, depending on your depth of field. And then shoot it, and of course it wouldn't tell the story the same. So, but uh, exactly, you had some work though. You wanted to talk over. Did you happen to get that? Oh yeah, up? Um, it's just still, story? yeah, it's still that same uh, Venom shot that I did uh, the other day. Um, I guess I kind of want to just talk about a little bit about like the whole process of how I. All right. Um, yeah, about how I um, um, just color grade and Da Vinci, and then taking that whole thing into Photoshop. If that's something that you know everybody wants to see, I would love to do that. But let me go over this real quick with Adrian. yeah, yeah, for sure. About this for sure. Um, Actually, um, let me uh, grab my bottle of water yeah. really quick too. So, Adrian, I did my uh, uh, behind the scenes video with this one, uh, and you can see the uh, the smoke on the behind the scenes. I mean, this this is all haze machine. That's that's all just the haze machine running continuously. The haze machine is actually underneath that whiteboard, and it's bouncing off another board on the other side, so it kind of keeps it all there. And uh, yeah, there's my setup for that for this shot. How far away everything was. This is a whiteboard that's bouncing off of, and this is coming in from the side behind it. That's of course coming front left, and there's front camera. Just a if you look at this, I wish I could pause this video, but I can't. If you look at the light right above the camera, like the sitting, I just have it sitting on the camera. It's it's only at like one percent. It's just enough. It might be five, but I think it's one percent. It's just enough to cast just just a little bit of highlight on him. You know, that's that's all that's there for is just to pull out some of those darks on him. But uh, that's my setup. I just filmed that real quick before I tore it down because I'm lazy. <laughs> it's like I should have it filmed. Story but, of my uh, life. I think I even turned off his his lights by now because the lights on on this uh, on this Terminator are actually the battery powered lights. I did nothing to those. That's that's his regular lights, battery powered lights that he comes with. Oh, cool. Um, unlike when I shot my Terminator yesterday, uh, his batteries were dead. <laughs> so I couldn't do it. But, uh, I hate that so much. I wish they just had like a better way to to light everything up instead and of. And I had a package of nothing but six twenty ones, is what it uses. But apparently they're all dead. I like tried like three or four batteries. It's and insane. I was like, it's none insane of these how fast they go. Yeah. That's what you get for buying a $5 pack of lights on Amazon. That is true, though. <laughs> Cheap. 
But uh, let's get into what you got. Um, while you're yeah, sure. That up, do you know how to share screen? Because you can share a screen. And I can yes, um, I can share my screen right now. So and I'm going to start that, with. Oops, sorry. Uh, let me. Oh, you you go and get yourself situated and get it backstage yeah. while I look at this question here. OG okay. fans. So uh, Maz, what questions should I ask a professional? I don't know if either of us qualify that, but sure. Yeah. Uh, photographer about taking pics of my collection. I have terrible lighting, but I would like some decent pictures to post. You don't. It also, do you have a desk lamp? I mean, if you got a desk lamp, you can do it. You need just one desk lamp, something that you can just control. Um, you might even be able to use the room lighting, but that's a lot trickier. If you have a desk lamp, we've cut down the trickiness in half um, for getting proper lighting on your subject. So get a desk lamp and then you. Maybe go to your grocery store and buy a piece of cardstock, and you can do everything you'd want to do with just these two things. Um, yeah. You you figure out your lighting point. Um, normally, I would use more than one light, though. But if you're using one light, in fact, I'm sorry to hold you up. I know, we're going to go over your stuff here. Oh no 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 problem. Take you know that time. you know that app that I was just complaining that I opened. I don't know if you're listening, but you know people are I, watching. Yeah, I, wasn't, yeah. I opened on accident. I got to open that up now just to show you. The differences are um, since we're talking about this real quick with OG fan here. Let me bring this over here to the screen. All right, let me. Uh, I'm sorry, Harry. Give me a minute. No, no, no. You're good. You're good. No worries. So, all right. So this is this is the the shot that I went and published. Right. This is with multiple lights. We saw the background. You know, the the making of. That's with one light, and then of course the room light behind me that wasn't cut out is giving you a little bit of orange there, but I had the one blue light still playing. Uh, and reflecting off that card. That's all that is. That's one blue light playing off that card. I already turned off his lights, though, on the uh, robot. But uh, So you can do some crazy stuff with one light. You know, just don't try to force that light to do all the work. Maybe bounce it off a card. Um, but that's, yeah, that's just one light on that. Yeah, and also I wanted to ask, did you want to um, shoot just your collection? Or are you trying to shoot individual... Um, you know, characters, are you trying to make a scene? This is another thing as yes. well. Yeah. So it, it really depends on what you're trying to shoot. Um, if you're trying to make like a whole cinematic scene, then it might take a little bit more than, you know, just one light. But if you're trying yeah. to just, hey, a quick shot of my collection, you can just honestly buy a cheap, you know, set of lights on Amazon or something. It's not really expensive at all. It's like maybe 40, 50 bucks. Yeah, the the two, yeah. I think it's a two or a four pack of newer yeah. uh, lights. Yeah. Which are the only lights I didn't bring over here to show because they're all, all connected to the stands. Oh, wait, no, I got one. Um, this is one of the new, it's on a different stand, but this is, and the diffuser is somewhere else. But this is the newer, these are, where's my mouse? God bless it. I keep moving <laughs> it over there. Um, this, this light here That's is USB exactly powered, so you got to have it plugged in. But this light, and it comes with its own stand. This is a different one. Um, I think it's like 20 bucks on eBay. Yeah. And you got different. Uh, so you got a power button here. You just turn it on, and you can go down. With, it's still on, but you, know, you can go down and bring it up. You don't have the full-on control you would have with, say, the more expensive lights, because you do have just you know, preset brightness settings here, but uh, you do have some control. And, yeah, and it should do the trick. Those are 20 bucks a piece, I think. Well, I think they come in packs, though, usually, and they come with they come with some gels. Uh, yeah, typically. they do come with uh, gels. Mm -hmm. um, all right. But this is this is an example of what one light can do if you use it right. Now, Harry, did you get your... Where, I don't see your stuff in backstage. Uh, yeah, I do have it all set up. Uh, let me share my screen really quick. Yeah. And my mouse is way over there again, and I'm like, why am I not finding it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, crazy times, crazy times. Okay, so it's not letting me share the window. I'll just share the entire screen. You can share the screen or the window. It all depends on which way you... There's, like, yeah, different options. Uh, like there's there's different tabs me, at the top. It's not letting me choose that for some reason. It's a little weird. So if you go but to I'll share, share screen, my entire screen, yeah, that's fine. You go to share screen, then you hit share screen again, and then at the top of that window, there's like mm -hmm. a tab. Yeah, for, so I clicked uh, on window, window, and then or... it doesn't show up. So all right, whatever, I'll just share my entire screen. That's fine. I'm sorry. That's all good. It's just gonna do like that weird infinity. Oh yep. my god! Yep, yep, oh! yep, 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 yep. Sorry, 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 sorry. Okay, here you go. <laughs> oh, all right. So Wait. now, 
we are in DaVinci Resolve. This is a um, video editing program. It's completely free. If you guys want to test that out, just go on. I just type in DaVinci Resolve on Google. You can download it for free and you can just use it straight away. So and you can use still images in this or no? You can as well, but um, it's mostly meant for a video camera. So it's probably better to use it for that. So, but so here is the footage that I took the other day of Venom. This is like the most basic setup you can probably do. You have a figure in front of a, a screen of some sort, and then I'm using just basically one light to light this whole scene. And so, okay, so this is basically the whole footage and I'm just kind of scrubbing through and finding the frames that I like. You can see me moving my light around there. Yeah, so you're just looking for a good yep, rim so light I'm there. just looking for, yep, uh, the frames that I like, and I'm going to just take them out and then throw them into Photoshop. But first, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about how you can color grade this. So in DaVinci Resolve, everything is note-based. So when you look over here, you see a bunch of different nodes over here. That's basically the equivalence to layers in Photoshop. So mm -hmm. everything is kind of uh, non-destructive. So you can go back and forth and change things up if you don't like them. So this first node right here, I'm going to use this to um, kind of adjust the exposure, contrast, that kind of stuff. So this is turned off right now. So I'm going to turn it on really quick. And then you'll see the difference right there. So this is after, before after so when i'm shooting with a video camera this is the raw footage that you're going to get everything looks super desaturated and not you know very bright so you throw it in here and that's the first note that i that i usually do is just to um kind of to brighten up the light uh the highlights and darken the you know the dark area a little bit oh okay yep and then the second node here it's this is a bit more i guess um, technical it's meant to just kind of convert the video file so that it works with DaVinci Resolve. So I'm not going to talk too much about that, but basically it just makes it so it works with DaVinci Resolve. Yeah, it's a little bit more complicated. And then this node right here, it's for color. So I usually um, like change the blue or the green or you know any other color that I don't like or I want to you know, adjust. So that's the after and that's before. You can kind of see the blues yeah. over here more become green, a bit afterwards. more green. Yep. Yeah. So it looks a bit more cinematic, a little film-like. And then the last note here is for LUTs. Um, if you guys don't know what LUTs are, it's basically it's basically a filter. Um, a LUT is short for lookup tables, but it's basically a filter. You can use that, you know, uh, in conjunction with all the adjustments that, that you made. And DaVinci Resolve does actually come with a few presets. So I'm just using a preset over here to give it a little bit more, you know, oomph, I guess. So, yeah. so that's the final um, edited shot that I have here. So this is before everything looks super boring and bland, and this is after. Okay. Well, let's let's talk about your composition though for a minute. You you notice, guys, mm -hmm. that he's got Venom off, kind of camera right. He's not center yep. frame. Yep. So um, um, this is called yeah. the, um, I can't remember what it's called right now. It's a uh, third, I can't remember. Sorry, guys, but it's called the third rule, something like that, which basically means you don't really want to center your subject. It looks kind of boring when you do that. So um, when you have a grid on, usually it's like a, like two lines over here, two lines over here. You kind of want to put position your subjects around like over here or over here or over here, over here. You don't have to do that, but that's just one of those rules that you can utilize if you want to. And that's what I did here. And I basically kind of copied the movie as well. So it's not you know anything crazy, but I have them off to the side right here. And then I added a, um, a little head sculpt here from, uh, from Captain Rex, because I didn't really have a goon that I wanted to use. So. So I just substituted that with a uh, with a random head sculpt, just to have him, you know, look at something, and so it can have a little bit of depth to the picture. Yeah, so that's what I did. Um, so now I'm just gonna scrub through and just kind of find whichever 
lighting situation that I like the most. Let's say right here, I'm looking for that rim light. I really like that rim light right here. Uh, what I'm going to do now is just right click and then grab still. And then I'm Which gonna... is making a JPEG of that. By the way. Yep, it's basically so making a JPEG. Like a, uh, Adobe Premiere or whatever, it just makes a JPEG of it. It's basically, yeah, it basically just made a JPEG. And then I'm going to scroll up through again, just find more lighting situations that I like. Maybe like right here, like it's casting that uh, orange light, you know, maybe from the street or something like that. I like that shot. I'm going to right click, grab still again, I'm going to scrub through again, maybe. Maybe this right here, because it's getting a little bit more of his jaw and like, the side of his face. I'll right click, grab still again. And if I like that, then I'm going to call it. And then I'll export all of the shots that I just took into Photoshop. And that's and where you do the way. final. Yep, that's where you do the final adjustments. And let me throw up Photoshop right here. I already have that set up kind of. All right, and if you don't have if you don't have DaVinci Resolve, then you can just skip and do, you could do all this in Photoshop. But he this is his process. This is just my process yeah. because I'm using a uh, cinema camera. You don't have to do that if you're just using maybe your phone or a DSLR. You can just do the same thing. Just um, put your camera on a tripod. You know, just aim it at your um your your figure, and then just take one light, and just kind of you know light paint the whole thing. Yeah. And then so now you can continue shooting with your shutter and just move mm -hmm. the light around and get several, several different angles. So you got different points of light on this. Figure exactly. And you can merge it all together. Exactly. At the end. And that's how you light the whole scene with just, you know, one light. And I think it's very effective. Yeah. So right now I have this first shot right here in Photoshop. And now I'm going to turn on the second layer with a different lighting setup. And it's kind of subtle, but if I zoom in right here, if I turn that off, you can kind of see it doesn't have you know any of that little textures on his head. If I turn that on, it brings out a little bit of that texture on his head there. And I'll go to my next layer and I'll turn that on. So this brings in that um, rim light that I really like right here. But then now you have the problem of having you know that light actually being in your frame, and you want to paint that out. And the way to do that is to just add a, a mask layer right here. I already did that, but when you add that mask layer, if you paint black, you get rid of the areas that you don't like. But if you paint white, then you'll keep whatever area that you like. So this is after, before, and after. So, so I got rid of that light over here. Just just to slow down for them in case they don't know. What yeah, you sorry. Do, you, you masked out your mm -hmm. hand with the light over there on the left, so mm -hmm. you paint it black over there. And basically, Actually, the, the fastest way I would have done it personally is just uh, grab white and, and paint it yeah, the, that, the lighting that effect too. you wanted mm -hmm. on him with the mask instead of trying to mask out all yep. that extra glare and stuff. That so the light uh, I can just yeah. honestly just do that really quick here. So this is the default shot with you know the light and some of the areas that I don't really like. So what I'm going to do is go down here, click on mask. So that added a mask layer right there. And I'm going to switch to my brush really quick over here and then I'll choose black over here and I'm going to paint out this area right here that I don't like so then you still keep all of that highlights here but you don't get any of that and also over here on his head I think there's a bit too much highlights so I'm also going to go in there and paint some of that out as well okay just just like so or again as i mentioned you could do it the other way and just paint the highlights on if you yep. just redo the layer stacks yep so, so that uh you're painting I, you're painting it in instead of taking out yeah so i think this is what you meant here so i'm gonna add a black uh, mask layer so what how you do that is by holding down alt or if you're using mac i'm not really sure which one but if you're yeah, using the pc it's yeah it's alt and then you click the mask button right here and then i'll add a black layer a mask layer so it'll take out everything so now what you want to do is paint back in the highlights that you yeah, and the reason you do this over the way he did that is like that light he was using off to the left uh that was ca actually casting a lot of extra light like you could actually mm -hmm. see it right near near the camera or, or near the uh near the light source 
And if you're using any kind of like fogs or anything, that's when you're probably going to want to do yes. it this way because those fogs are going to just, that light is going to carry all the way to the figure and it's just mm -hmm. going to be off mm -hmm. the entire yep. time. You're going to be able to see the transition for sure. Yeah. So you just want the light at that point, mm -hmm. the light, uh, the effect of the light, which is the, yep. the key or ring light. Yep. So um, then, yeah, sorry. so, um, yeah, that's okay. Uh, so moving on to the next layer here, same thing, layer that on top. Oh, and I totally forgot to, to tell you guys that you want to change the blending mode from normal to lighten. That's, I think, the best option to give you, you know, that realistic look. So if you go normal, it's just a normal picture. But then if you switch to lighten, it blends the two together. And sometimes you can go with screen, though. Over sometimes you can go with screen as well. Effect. Yeah, depending on, you know, the shots that you have. But for this shot right here, everything is set on uh, lighten. I think it just looks the best. So now I'm going to bring in some of that orange light over here. And then I'm going to do one more layer of a little bit more, a little bit more orange. But since I don't really like how it's casting too much orange around here, I'm going to do the same thing and add another mask layer right here. And just to bring in the tiny little bit of, you know, reflection on his eye, a little bit on his chest and a little bit on the head over here. And that's the whole process. So this is before, that's after. Before, beautiful shot. And after. Oh, thank beautiful. you, thank you. I noticed yeah. you had some lighting though back in DaVinci when you were scrolling through that. You had some lighting that actually brought out his his camera right eye a little better. Um, yes. So. And I kind of I kind of leaned towards that personally when I, when I saw you do that. I like, Ooh. Mm -hmm. But I was like, I don't remember if you used it. Yeah. So so it just so. Yeah. So it totally depends on you know what you prefer. So um, that's just the one that I kind of just ended up with. Oh but, no no. Yeah. Like, your shot. It was a great shot. Yeah, I'm not talking about shot yeah. at all. You can you can totally go back and uh, like you can bring go back to eye a little bit. Mm -hmm. So you you can go back, right? So you can yeah. go back to DaVinci Resolve and look for more lighting situations you like, and then just t bring that out, take that into Photoshop again, just throw that on top, and add that in. And yeah. that's why I I prefer you know just the lighting in post instead of you know setting up three or four lights. And then now you can't change anything in post. I can't break myself out of my habit. I keep setting up. Yeah, and that's, over here, yep, that's, that's another thing. And it looks cooler too, you know, when you have a, a bunch of lights set up, it just looks more legit than just kind of <laughs> using one little panel. And I don't know, man. Your stuff looks right out of a movie, man. I don't know <laughs> thank you. Not thank you. Or not. Uh, yeah. Don Prime is asking, what about Chrome image edit? I, I personally, I, I don't know what that is. Uh, what about what? I'm sorry. So what about Chrome image edit? Is that like, ooh. <sighs> Yeah, I don't, I don't like that. All right, sorry. <laughs> I'm going to go back to uh, regular life here for a minute. Um, I don't know. What, what is that, Don? Is that like like a, a free image editing thing through Chrome? Uh, I'm not familiar with Chrome image. Yeah, editing. I've never really heard of it or used it before, so I'm not really sure. But um, Photoshop is my main, my main thing. Oh, apparently that was a joke. Because we're oh. all about jokes here. We're not We're not trying to learn anything or anything. <laughs> Always got to interrupt the class, huh, Don Prime? <laughs> Wow, that well, that fooled me. I was like, "Wow, that sounds legit." I'm like, "Okay." Yeah, I thought they got you know Google Docs, they got you know uh, mm -hmm. Drive and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if they have you know <laughs> anything else. Really, it's not surprised yeah. if they had a Chrome mm -hmm. image yep. edit thing. Um, no, but any yep. software works. The the nice thing though with with some of these more premium softwares uh, is the fact that you can work in raw format. And as we yes. touched on last week. Raw format will give you the most control. Yes. Uh, because it's got the most bit depth information mm -hmm. saved from your image capture. Yep. yep. So you'll have so much more control to do whatever else you want with the image. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, let's see. That was awesome, though. Thank you for sharing that. And I really yeah, sure. wish my screens weren't all the way over here. Let's. Uh, Let's see. Let's find something else to give you composition um, awareness here. Uh, now, there is sometimes though when you're taking a shot, and that straight-on shot works. Um, you know, it just it just helps sell the piece. It, it gives it like this. This uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I can my, my vocabulary sucks or something. Symmetry. Um, well, it gives you the symmetry. It gives you, you know, it just gives you that. It, it really depends on the figure and the pose, but let's just add this to the stream. And we'll talk about that. This guy yeah. here. 
A shot like this, this is a hero shot. We're only focusing on him. He's coming straight at you. He's walking towards the camera. He's got full frame focus, everything. And this is one of the situations where the straight, the straight shot works where he's not off. Well, he's off a little bit to one side, but barely. I think that was more of a cropping issue than an actual uh, uh, issue with the way I set him up. But, you know, he's walking towards the camera. And he's just got that authority thing, and you know, he's full He's full focus. There's nothing else in there even trying to pull focus, uh, except for maybe some of that snow. I guess you can blame some of that. But, Incredible uh, figure, too, by the way. Wow. Uh, he that costs pretty plenty. But... <laughs> worth it, though. That guy looks amazing. The muscles, the suit. Oh God! You know they they, uh, this, they need to get Hot Toys needs to actually get this guy to sew the suits because this guy, you know, like when they make a Spider-Man figure, like that new mm -hmm. classic suit Spider-Man, you can see where the hand sewn is yeah. versus the machine sewn. Yeah. This guy, I think it's all machine sewn. I have no idea, but it fits that's, him. Uh, to a that's team. also full fabric, right? Yeah. Yeah, so you get crazy, crazy poses, and then you don't have to ever worry about any sort of weird creasing. Yeah, this is true. But, uh, yeah, so with this shot, this this is a shot with just one single light coming straight down on him. Uh, well, actually, it's a little bit in front of him. And that's it. That's one light. That's one light, center shot. And it highlights the piece, and yet it gives it that that intimidation just because of the way you let the light play on him. Um, I think the light might have actually been feathered a little bit off to camera right because if you notice, the, bit, less, the left bit. side of his face is darker. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, other than that, it's it's a straight on shot. And so, um, OG fan, here's one light. One light. This is the epitome of one light. Now, this is a bigger light. So, with lighting... See how these shadows are not really harsh, There's, uh, except for when you get like really into those cracks, so you get like dark, harsh shadows. The rest of it is very soft. Your your soft shadows is like there's no hard lines really on these shadows. It's all got like a little bit of gray leading to that black, for example. Um, but you know this is all soft here. It's all soft until it gets to like the, just the parts that the light can't get to, but it doesn't have any kind of hard cutoffs here. You see, you still got a little bit of playground room here between this dark, dark, and this gray. So this is all soft shadows, and this this stems from using a light that's bigger, um, not just diffused with a diffuser, but it's bigger than the figure. Actually, it's the light I was using is I don't know how big that is. So the figure is a 12-inch figure. In fact, the light I'm using is this one here. So let's see, it's uh, 20 inches. So the bigger the light is, the more evenly spread that light's going to be able to get the curvature. The figure is going to play less um, to create harsh shadows. It's going to have to take a lot more work to do the harsh shadows on that figure than, uh, than if you're using a smaller light. If I was using a smaller light on this figure, I probably would have gotten the top of his head. And then this... It had just been a mess. It would it, it probably would have lit up this, and the rest of this have been pretty dark down here. It just wouldn't have had the power, wouldn't have had the, the, the range of coverage to actually get past that figure. So if I was using, say, you know, one of these, this is a loom cube, it just wouldn't. Okay. Yeah, soft like Doc Ock's head sculpt. I see what you're saying. <laughs> but uh, did we want to talk about that a little bit too? <laughs> Uh, that's more of a weekend thing, but Saturday thing, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, you know, this small light. Let's just take a little look here. And of course, this is not helping. But this small light, you see how harsh that is on him. See all the. Let me. I should probably. Yeah, zoom probably in. zoom in a little bit. Um, see how harsh that's hitting him. And I could put this diffuser on it, and it helps a little bit. But look, it's still really harsh, right, guys? Yep. So we take that light. Now, this is not much bigger, really, but I'll take that light, turn that off. This is a blue light. Let me uh, pull this filter out. And uh, we're going to go, I think it was more than 20% where we had it at. But see how that, where was I? More like this, I guess? Yep. Just 
see how much more even that light covers him up up in here. And I mean, not down here because this is not big enough to really catch down there either. But up in here in the same kind of zone where that smaller light was, see how more evenly that light's wrapping kind of around the body more. Um, and if I turn it that way, you know, even even more so, it's got some nice smooth shading there as opposed to. As opposed to, I, would, I guess I should put that back on it. As opposed, look how the glares are just all over that. It's just all bright glares on that. I'm bring it back around here, maybe some. Go from that to that. Just look how much smoother that is. Just so much cleaner. So, if you got a light like this and you want to fix that, you can try this. I'm bouncing it off this it. card now. I'm I'm increasing the size that this light is going to be hitting this figure with. Look at that. I mean, it's still a little blown out. Maybe I can just play with the angle here. I just don't want to use that. But there we go. So back here, it's kind of behind him, bouncing on this card, and coming around. It's, it's just amazing what you can do with this light. Um, so small lights aren't bad, but you're going to want some bounce cards for your small lights. Um, which then you have to work out where to put those because they can end up in your camera shots really easily. Yep. So, um, but your image composition is huge, guys, uh, and your lighting in conjunction with that composition is huge. So when I was doing that that shot earlier, you know, the, the one I posted today, and uh, I'm just using this kind of the behind the scenes again, and you see... This all this blue right here, this blue, this is a bright blue light, but it's bouncing off that card and it's casting all that light onto onto dread. Do you want to share a screen there? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are you pointing out there, Mr. Moss? Uh, all right. So uh, we got I can't pause these. This is what I hate about Instagram. Video. Instagram. Um so yeah, all this blue that's up near here is all coming from this light bounce here off of this big, huge, and it's only big and huge like that because, well, I, I don't want to waste it and cut it. And I'd rather try to make use of the bigger panels because it's cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's just bouncing off of that and, and projecting so much of that blue, but yet not so much to wash out the figure. So, and yeah, and of course there is a little bit of blue white down there in the back, which is why the Terminator is still getting hit with some, but it's not a whole lot. It's just kind of just hitting on the edge there. So if we go back to that, uh, go back to that. That's that's with just the blue light off the bounce card. Um, and you can see that some of that white light. Actually, I guess that one was on too. Is still hitting the Terminator back there because that that white light had a half a blue card on it. And the other half was white because I. Taking the blue card, and I had to basically go to using these, um, which were the ones that came with the newer, but I cut them down to fit in these. So I had to reassemble. <laughs> but uh, yeah, light and image composition. I don't know. I, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> Harry, <laughs> take over. My brain's going. Basically, just light the thing and then just shoot it. Basically. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see, where is another good example of composition here? Here we go. I like this one. Oh, yeah, that's a good shot. Lower thirds. He, I mean, the, the, your biggest eye catcher is not the goblin, actually. It's the glider, and then you work your eyes up from the glider to the goblin, who is actually creeping over to that left side, camera left. But uh, what's up, Exotic Carfax? Um, this is the art figure 015. Um he is long, no longer produced. He's like 600 bucks on eBay now. But uh, yeah, he's a cool figure. Very cool. <clears throat> but as you see here, and actually the composition wise, this ledge that looks like he's flying over a building, that's just the edge of the table. That's just playing with my camera angle. I got my camera down below the table that he's on. And I'm using that, that ledge of the table to make it look like he's flying over a building rooftop. All because of my, the composition of what I'm using for my, my surroundings 
I was able to a get some depth without having any kind of background stuff because I don't at this point I didn't have anything to really really use as a as a prop, and then b um, my brain just shut off again. <laughs> I need more <laughs> coffee. Happens. Harry, take over. That happens. That happens. <laughs> I need more coffee. Take over. I'm not kidding. I'll be right back. You, you want to bring up one of yours right, while so, I got you here? Yeah, I yeah, you for here. sure, for sure. I can, yeah, I can share something really quick. All right, uh, that says it's you. So, whoa, uh, that is so trippy. Okay. Ah, no, you, you oh, stopped oh, sharing. Whoops. Let me do that again. Yeah, share it again, and I'll get you back in there. Sorry about that. Okay, and I got to refill my coffee. All right, so as Mr. Moss is going to get more coffee, I'm going to just ramble a little bit about random stuff. Hopefully, I don't bore anybody. But just to go off of, you know, my shot from earlier, at this point, um, I'm going to just basically merge all these together by just selecting all of these and then just Control E and merge everything together. Then I'll take this to a template that I made over here this is basically where i have you know the black bars and my you know my little name down here and some final effects and you know and stuff so i can talk a little bit more about that so this is basically straight from over here i'll bring that over here and that's the shot then i'm gonna go and add you know just a tiny bit more colors i'm gonna add a little bit more like you know orange a little bit more blue and then i'm gonna throw in you know like dust effects you know like it's very subtle, but if you go in here and you look at that, it does add a little bit more to the shot, a little bit more depth. You know, and just like a little bit of smoke down here. If I blow this up a little bit, you might be able to see more. Yeah, if I, um, if I lower down the opacity a little bit, it'll blend it in a little bit more. Yeah, so basically just kind of get whatever feel that you think is right for your shot. You know, what I do usually is just go for that, you know, cinematic look. And yeah, these are the colors that I usually go for. But yeah, not to uh, bore you guys or anything. But we'll wait for Mr. Moss to come back. Any of you guys have any sort of question or anything at all that I can answer, please feel free to drop that in the comment section and I'll try and answer anything. Oh, there he is. All right, sorry guys, I need I needed yeah. more coffee. My brain keeps I was uh, just rambling a little bit, you know, boring everybody to death. I, I can see that you are because the last question has still been, "What figure is this?" Um, that's true. It's not your fault. It's just I don't know where they're all at. I think they're. Yeah. I think maybe they just hit play and walk away. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, all right, so I would love to see what you guys have serious questions. Uh, if you have any questions on setting up a shot that you you may want to set up please let us know uh don prime is asking did you grease up your venom with the shinitsu grease, Terry? <laughs> no i didn't What's do anything to venom. he Come just comes in, right out of the box looking like looking like that um we're gonna have harold on the stream tonight by the way He'll oh cool here. cool cool mr h Green. So harry and harold is going to be very confusing for me because <laughs> i'm neither of those um, <laughs> so yeah we have that but um, why have you not done any Shinsu Reese? What's up with that? That's how you oh, protect I mean, your figure. That kind of figure is going to have flaking issues unless you. Yeah, I, I probably Shinitsu should. Reese. <laughs> but that's also kind of daunting, you know, having a figure like that you just bought and then just put a bunch of grease all over it. It, uh, I've put it all over my my stuff. Yeah, I probably should. asking for a camera less than three hundred fifty dollars. Uh, that's going to be a bit tough. Yeah, you can probably, rubber. yeah, you can probably find one nowadays, but might be a bit tough. Um, 
maybe a rebel yeah. t3i that could probably yeah be... one of the cheap canon yeah. uh, rebels probably could do it but the thing is with that is you're gonna run into problems if because i know you don you're gonna want to stream or or something with that camera not just shoot pictures with it and that's where you're gonna run into having to spend more money so um yeah base model canon rebel though should be just fine for doing photography with and uh, you know, and, and whatnot. But I, I know you, I think you're going to want to do more streaming and photography, not just photography. So if that's the case. The M50 is still my most solid thing I can think of. Uh, I know Lael uses the M50. Um, I use the M50. A lot of YouTubers use the M50, and it's actually really good for photography, as I've, as I've proven time and time again. So um, Harold is not backstage or anything. What do you mean? What, what should I be looking at then? Maybe around seven, eight hundred. Yeah, your M50 is gonna be like six to seven hundred dollars, and that's with a lens. So, which is pretty good. Yeah. Considering what it's putting out, I mean, this is the M50 Mark II right here. This is six ninety nine. Comes with a lens. Um, I'm sorry. This is the Mark One. Mark II is what I shot the pictures with. Um, either way, it's still the same quality. But they're great. They're introductory. They're easy to use. Um, here, <laughs> H Green's in wardrobe and makeup. We're going to pull out <laughs> some of H Green's pictures today and go over them. Hey, guys, if you want to submit pictures for us to go over during our streams, what would be great is if you just hashtag Invader Moz. I, I thought of maybe making up a, another clever one that's not that I haven't been using for years. But <laughs> no, hell with it. Just, just hashtag Invader Moz. Straight to the point. Straight and to the we'll point. talk about them each week. We'll go over those uh, those particular shots each week if you want to hashtag me on instagram hashtag invader moz so uh mk2 is 680 bucks that's not bad it should come with a 15 to 45 millimeter lens um so that should be good you're gonna want some more light than just your regular light in the room though just saying don if you're doing your video stuff you're probably gonna want uh an extra little light to point at you if you don't already have one But if you get one, I can teach you how to use it. It's not hard. We'll get you on like here and we'll go over the settings so you can stream with it. <clears throat> all right, H Green. All right. You already have a light bar. Okay. Rock on. Where is H Green? <laughs> I don't want to start a whole new subject with him popping in here in the middle of it. You know, I'd rather just kind of wait for him. <laughs> How about coffee? It's probably too hot still. Yeah, it's still hot. My Keurig, I'm making that work some overtime this week. <laughs> oh. Whoa. And there's the dogs. I don't know what they're working at. Excuse me a minute. <laughs> the beauty of having pets. They just bark for no reason. There's nothing going on. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> this dog, man. this dog, I tell you. Bring out the Ace Green is not a Gimp exotic Carfax. He's Ace Green. All right. We'll move on. Oh, wait. There was something. Something made a noise. I don't know what made a noise. Something did. I don't know what it was. Oh, my God. <laughs> you did live streaming. All right. Let's move on then. Yeah, the, the uh, N50, I, I got lucky finding one in stock, man. I did. Um, let's move on. Unless you got any other picture you want to talk about with the composition, um, here's one I'm going to talk about. How about that? We'll add that to the stream. This is just another use of, of visual storytelling by not having my subject. I mean, he's in a very basic pose here. He's standing on, he's standing, he's got one foot on a rock, the other foot is just on the ground, and he's just off to his side. He's got he's got one hand I think, yeah, uh, wrapped around his his uh, harness. The other hand is just off camera because I ain't got it doing anything. I just put it off camera. But yet, you know, you turn his head towards that you know a direction like he's got here. He looks like he's looking off at something. I'm playing actually with the eye angles that he comes sculpted with because he doesn't look straight. The sculpt does not look straight ahead. He's looking off to one side. So I'm using that. You know, this figure obviously is not going to let you do anything more but utilize that 
or you can hide his eyes. But this head sculpt so good, why would you do that? So I decided to make him looking off in that direction. Just give him a little head tilt. Um, like he's just stopped. He's got his foot resting. He's taking some weight off of his foot there. He's got the rock going. Um, and then, of course, and I'm pointing with my hand again because I are smart. Um, so he's got his foot here. He's got his other foot here. And he's got his hand holding the, uh, the harness here. And if you follow the figure, what's really cool, though, is you follow the figure because your eyesight should stick right on him first, right, before you look at anything else. If you follow the complete look of the figure, this pointing towards this cool dinosaur skull thing. <laughs> it's all composition. You know, I'm using both sides here for that. Um, we doing spoilers for the book of Mando Fett? <laughs> I don't know if we're going to be streaming that long. Because um, that, you know, we, this comes on tonight at 3 a.m. My time, your, your time is midnight, uh, yep. Harry. So, uh, oh, man, uh, I'm excited, but also not excited. You know, because Robert Rodriguez is coming back for this one. So, yeah, we will we'll get Cat in this see. one. I hope so. I hope so. I just hope we don't kill off Cat Bane, man. There he is. I was trying. Sorry. <laughs> there he oh. is. Harold, Harry. Mr. H. Green. What's going on, guys? What's going on? What's going Not on? a whole lot, man. Today we're talking about image composition. You're getting a little bit of echo there. Uh, yeah, a little yeah. bit of echo. No, there we go. No, I had my phone on too. Ah, cool, cool, cool. There we go. All right, let's let's pull you up, sir. It's green in the, his house. Which one do you want to look at? Oh God. Um, hey, there's, hey, there's some my work. You can look at that. Yeah, let's talk yeah, about this work. This is awesome <laughs> work. Go. Look at this guy in the center. I'm just kidding. I just do. I just do that to draw people in. <clears throat> there we go. Let's go with this. Can you you want to you want to go over anything that you were thinking as as far as your image composition while you were taking this shot? Did you have any plan, or did you just kind of go in and actually find this the shot? It was that. it was kind of just more or less just doing a simple portrait shot and just kind of messing around with the light and and seeing what color kind of worked the best and you know trying to just kind of get a mood more than anything. Um, but yeah, just just a basic shot, nothing nothing crazy. <clears throat> well. Here's something uh, as far as color working the best. He's a he's a primarily blue figure, right? Mm -hmm. To bring him out to make him pop, you're gonna want want to use something in that yellow orange spectrum because that is its polar opposite on the wheel, <clears throat> which means it is its complementary color, right? And that's gonna help just bring it out a little bit. Now um, we're gonna pick this apart just a little bit. I love it. I love it. But the one thing I see you got some blue back here on the back. God bless it. All right, where's my mouse? <laughs> Back mm -hmm. here, you got some blue light back here, right? Yeah, and all and all that is is probably just my displays or the TV on, like uh, in the background behind it. So mm. yeah, if only you could have bounced this and kind of made it kind <clears> of <throat> fill in this darkness a little bit, not completely light it up because you know I don't like to light up everything completely. But right, right. Uh, when I don't light things up completely, it's actually usually a bounce of a blue or something to just still separate it a bit, you know that kind of <clears> thing. But I would have bounced this with a weak light of some sort. Maybe it's some more blue or uh, or, or white. Just something just weak, just just barely there, just to kind of bring out a little bit of the mm -hmm. detail here, just a little bit. You know, you don't want it to make a whole other light source. Just something to just to kind of bring it out a little bit more. But I love the way the light is playing off of what you got here. I love the fact that it's raising up this here. It's showing you that that depth here catching some of the so, details there's yeah. nothing wrong with it just you know what i would have done is i would have added one more <clears throat> yeah and that literally was my figure sitting on a table in front of my couch yeah. and i had my camera on a tripod just sitting there and i said ah, i'm just gonna mess around with the lights so that's yeah that's definitely kind of like yeah. now like now like my armor shot i mean that was a scene you know planned out with some other figures and you know like yeah did here. you have to do any my... sort of cropping afterwards too, or is that just like straight out of the camera? Uh, this one probably like this one is pretty much straight out okay. with just a little bit of, um, probably a little bit of filters and then adjusting, um, like shadows and and brightness and stuff like okay, that. Okay. So I tried to get as much of that. This one, especially like in camera. <clears throat> 
but that Definitely. was just a black blackboard behind it with a little bit of atmosphere aerosol that I just blew that with some, and actually this was even before I had my, um, my panel light and it was just some colored puck lights that you'd put in a closet yeah. and then just any those light. sitting. Yeah. Just those sitting like behind the stormtrooper, So you can't see those and then bouncing up on that board. So I was um, happy with the, the way that that came out. <clears throat> let me address Don's question real quick. Um, mm-hmm. He's asking if it's better to buy a camera in, per, in person or online. It really depends on where you're buying it from. If you're buying it from like Best Buy or Amazon or something, you can buy it online. That's fine. Uh, if you're talking about like Mercari or something, you probably want to meet the person at least or get your hands on it before you give them money. But that's, that's just right. my business practices. You don't have to do that. Um, typically, though, they're packaged pretty well. They can ship pretty well. So if you can find a good price um, for a new in the box or even refurbished, you can buy refurbished. Uh, most of the times those aren't a bad deal. Uh, I just don't usually feel that from what I'm finding, refurbished really saves you enough money to buy something that's secondhand like that. That's just me. Uh, sometimes you can, though. Sometimes you can do that. But my but, experience, yeah. what I found, hasn't been cheap enough for me to go, yeah, I'll buy that one. So, Yeah, with my Rebel T6, I mean, we picked that up at Best Buy, and I don't remember the price. I'd have to look it up. But, I mean, that was it came with a camera bag. Um, it came with a standard lens. Um you know, just the kit lenses with it um, come, came with a telephoto lens, you know, and just some accessories and stuff like that, too. So it's just it kind of helps on that little added cost, you know, things that you wouldn't think to buy if you just got the body in a, in a lens and just helps protect it. So. But what I'll, what I'll ask Don again, and I'm pretty sure I already know the answer because I think I've already spit it out. But you really just need to ask yourself, what do you want to use the camera for? If it's just photography, you mm-hmm. can buy a little three hundred dollar camera. If you want to be able to do anything else with it, you may want to come up to our level with the M50 or I don't know how much your your six was, but uh, you know something a bit more more advanced because then you're going to want you know uh, you know like 1080p or 4K or you know autofocus or uh, you know uh, different uh, frame rates. You know these are different things you may want to consider if you want to be able to do any kind of film with it. So. Right. If, as far as just taking a picture, you just want to make sure you probably have like, what, 20 megapixels or tw- 20, uh, is it megapixels? I don't know. Yeah, 20 megapixels or more. <clears throat> and really, anything over 20 me- uh, megapixels is kind of overkill. Um, you're just, you're just using, you're, you're making bigger pictures than you really need. Unless you're going to start printing out huge banners or something with your photography. You don't really need anything bigger than 20 megapixels. Um, so. Anyway, uh, let's see. Exotic Carfax. Uh, this is Mac Geeks. And I think Max Geekdom had a question for me earlier. I think I missed. Yeah, Don says I already called it. So that, yeah, what, what we're rocking uh, is probably your best bang for the buck. I'm not saying you have to get it, but uh, the Canon M50 is very popular with YouTubers, and it's good at photography. I, I mean, I can attest to that. I've been doing it with it. So. And and I could be completely wrong too, but I think because that's mirrorless too. And I think it tends to have, it's a lot faster. So like if it like, for instance, like Jared that does a lot of stuff with, um, oh, like fireworks or just even like dust debris, like blowing in the background, it'll catch a lot of that stuff. Like when you're trying to get stuff at high speed too. And like I said, I, I could be wrong in that, but I, that somebody had to, I swear I had heard that before. Uh, Max is asking about taking pictures within a DTOF. All right, so you can take great pictures within a DTOF uh, if you have lights in there. Uh, I know my DTOFs, which are still upstairs because I'm waiting on Maja cases to come so I can install them before I put something like a DTOF down here as well, which may be in the way later, you know. So before I move that down here, when I have the Maja cases installed, that's why the only thing I got for a cabinet right now is this collax shelf on wheels so i can just wheel it right out of the way when i'm ready because that's where the detoffs or the uh, module cases should go um but if you got a decent light bar in there that lights up you could just use that in your camera um it's just all a matter of positioning um you probably want to put the the lights a little bit ahead of your figure and have it going down so it lights up the front but it gives a fall off around the edges and stuff um you can even add a second light behind it if you want to give it a ring as well but you can shoot it in there um there's nothing special to it. You can use your phone. It's just a matter of holding still. Um, you guys got any thoughts shooting in the DTOF? Yeah, I think it just comes down to, you know, 
um, posing your character and just you know playing with the camera angles, you know, because there's not much you can do really when it's just standing in you know in a detox. So you guys, you guys gonna make me get uh, my boy up in here. I haven't. Um, <laughs> was it series? Is that who it is? Yeah, and I think with the phone too is just adjusting yeah. your light, like on your light source, like on the camera when you tap your screen, and kind of let and, and bringing that down and making it a little yeah. bit darker, just because it's some obviously the detolf is flooding light and washing everything out, so that kind of helps and, and simulates like a faster shutter speed. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that might, that might help a little bit too. But series yeah. two hundred nine, I, I can I can try to ask if he wants to be on the show sometime, but he shoots in the oh, yeah. detolf all the time. Yeah, um, this is all in the detolf. You know, he just looks like he's got like some kind of maybe parchment paper backing or something behind the detol, so mm -hmm. it doesn't you know go through. But that's a detol. He's shooting it in the detol with the glare. Yeah. So he's just putting something behind it so he can shoot in the detol. I know I'm moving a little fast because you know if I'm going to talk about his stuff, I'd like to at least get him in here maybe. But uh, but yeah, I, I do like the cleanness of it. I mean, he can make some really good shots using this clean. And I don't think he's adding any extra light. If you look at this body here, a lot of the light's coming from the top. Um, so it's just the lights from his detolf, like on the top shelf of, his, of, or, of the one above it or whatever. That's all it is. That's the only light he's getting. Maybe some room light. So, um, let's see. Donna Carfax, what is your preference in camera practical effects and sets or buildings of figure and Photoshop and layering effects? Uh, well, Harry does a lot of his stuff in Photoshop. He does do some practical stuff. Um, me and me and uh, Harold, we use more practical stuff than Photoshop. Although I have been known to throw in like a floor, like a, just a texture, on top of my my regular floor that I'm using, uh, and that's just a layer. But uh, for the most part, I try to do everything in camera. But uh, I think if you yeah. can utilize both, I think that's probably going to be your best bet. It's just yeah. Mm -hmm. looks the best i think and even if you don't want to get into the photoshop too i mean i have the pixar app on my iphone and it does you know some similar things that you can work with like uh lightsaber effects i think like my kylo ren that all that was was a sticker that was from that program and then you can change the blend mm -hmm. to kind of get it right and then you know brightness and stuff like that to make it kind of fit into the photo um so yeah, there's there's things you can do even with the simplest programs without having to get involved. Because I mean, I I haven't even touched Photoshop yet, and I get confused very easy. So <laughs> it's something it's something that I'd want to want to you know look into a little bit more myself. All right. Um, and any tools help. Let's put it that way. Yeah. So. Don't 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 throw out any tool just because somebody yeah. one person shuns it. Man, use what you can, what you what you feel you need to to get the picture or the result that you want. Um. See, OG fan, uh, I have a Nikon D850. I've personally never shot on Nikon. Uh, I hear good things about them. I don't really know how to use what settings should I use for a shelf photo. It depends on your light. So your key settings that you're going to want to shoot with, uh, the, the three that you have to pay the most attention to is going to be your shutter speed, uh, your aperture, and your ISO. Um, ISO, you want to try... This is not necessary, but you want to try to shoot that as low as you can. So optimally at ISO 100, because it's as low as it goes. Um, aperture <clears throat> is going to be, you know, basically how much you want in focus. Um, and it's also the lower that number. Like if you're shooting f 1.4 or something, you're going to let in a lot of light, which means your shutter speed can be faster. So. I, I, pretty, I pretty much prioritize everything by aperture. I want my depth of field to be determined and not anything else trying to determine that. So um, I try to shoot with uh, typically 5.6 is usually the highest I go on my aperture. Um, and that's you know going to give me, a, for action figure photography, that can give me a pretty decent uh, range. But then again, not too much so that it looks like they're toys playing around. They, they actually have some depth to them. Um, well, I got this open. I got to find my mouse. I have no idea where my mouse is. This is the problem with three, three, three uh, monitors. And I like okay. to drop my aperture down as low as I can, too, because that's like even my case lights behind me. Like a lot of photos that I've done lately, all it is is those in the back. And it 
it gives it that nice like bokeh in the back and it looks yeah. just like buildings like lights from like a street or something like that and it's like you never know that that's yeah. all it was so yeah definitely definitely yeah. um this one shot at iso 100 here it's an f4 so this i can go to 1.4 on, on this lens this is f4 <laughs> And my frames per second, how fast it's going, is 0.4 seconds. So um, it's just it's just above uh, one second shutter speed, and I and I shoot that slow primarily so that the atmosphere effects that I got in here don't get uh, strains. They don't look like like smoke or like just like somebody lit a candle and you're just seeing that little bit of swirls or whatever from a candle. I want more of a hazy. Yeah, right. streaming. Yeah, yeah. So I want more of a haze. So the slower my, my shutter speed, the more haze I can get. But the problem with the slower shutter speed um, that you have to be concerned with is it is not as sharp. Your pictures are not going to be as sharp as if you had a faster shutter speed. Um, and also, of course, with a slow shutter speed, you want to be on a tripod. No ifs, ands, or but. Uh, especially this slow. This slow, a, a flea could fart on your finger and totally ruin everything. <laughs> so I'm just saying. Tripod, big big thing. Um, let's see. Whoa, where's my mouse? Jesus. And especially the people like that take photos of action figures, and I, I mean, I learned that from you know taking Black Series or photos of Black Series figures too. Is I have a Manfrotto, one of the smaller. I was trying to find it. I thought it was right here, but to just get as low as you can, like with that too, and helps those angles. Like this, obviously, you have on a table, so even on a tripod, you can kind of get that angle too. But especially if you're shooting outside on the ground or whatever. <clears throat> uh, you guys can keep talking. I'm just typing this out real quick. Oh, you're good. Yeah, you could. I can't type. <laughs> <laughs> just, there you go. Hang a banner. Boom. Look at that. There we go. Boom. So, yeah, if you guys want us to discuss your photos in the future, uh, each week when we do this show, we'll look under the hashtag and <clears> see <throat> if you guys have uh, left any photos for us to go over for that week. So that's a thing. Uh, I know Jarrett does that as well on his channel. If you guys also want more photography advice and tips and tricks, Sir Dork 730 I think. Is yep. that, isn't he still? I don't know if I still have him down here. I think I do. I don't think I took him off. I guess he's not on here. If you go to my first Toy Talk episode, his link's in the description there for sure. Um, yeah, 730. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Yep. So you can also check him out. And again, we're going to utilize, I'm going to steal that from right there. Hashtag Invader Moz. We'll go over your stuff. Um, well, OG Fink, you don't need IG, but it does help. Um, you know. What do you mean? What's the hashtag? It's right there, Exotic Car Fan. You guys make this so confusing. <laughs> uh, OG Fan, you can always message me or something somehow and have me go look, but it's the easiest way is Instagram. <clears throat> All right, so moving on. Uh, we're still, we're today we're talking about image composition. Let's go back to you, though, because we have your, we didn't get to really talk about her. Uh, you did, but we didn't. Right. So, you're, I love this composition here. There's a, a couple of tweaks. I don't know. This this leg bend is kind of weird here. It's just coming off weird. Just something right. I would have addressed before I published, you know, or, or whatever. It just like turned a little bit more and more like the stance well, I, spread apart. Is her legs apart better. and she's just got a slight bend in her knees? And, it's and, probably just from that, yeah, that angle and then and then yeah. just. A, I would have yeah. played with the angle to work that out personally. That's just what I would have done there. Um, <clears> other than that. I really like it. Um, I probably would have put her off more to one side or something, though. Um, maybe. Yeah, who mm -hmm. knows? But the one thing I would have made sure of before I, I went further is to get that hitch out of her knee because it looks just weird. So, I don't know. What do you think? What do you think, Harry? Um, yeah, I, I do think that she's a little bit, yeah, a little bit uh, off to the side. But, um, but overall, I think it looks fine, honestly. It just really depends on what you're trying to go for. And if you think the post looks good to you, um, I don't see why, yeah, you wouldn't shouldn't or shouldn't publish that. 
Oh no, really no up I, to you, I, yeah. I didn't mean to say it like that. I'm sorry. You are right. <laughs> no, 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 and it, you know, no, it's it, it's no, fine. I'm just it's saying like, in general, yeah. Because you can, and if if you go back to any more of mine, the one the like the Leia and the Bausch with the the Han and Carbonite, my Black Series figures. A lot of times, I catch myself just you know. I, again, I work for like I came home late today. I work yeah. for a landscaping company. I work long days, so like sometimes I get an idea in my head, and I'm just trying to hurry up and you know get something done and you lose focus on those things and the thing that i've learned now is like really you've got to take every minute that you can every second that you can to just take your time you know take the photos and then if you don't like it go back and fix it um yeah and but the the leia um in that one which i edited this one out and changed it but like the original one i had tilted her head her helmet up so she could was looking right at han and the carbonite but mm -hmm. when I did that, it lifted up and you could see the chin of the figure. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, I was like, nasty. oh, you got to be. And I like it was one of those. It was probably a month or two later. I'm like flipping through my Instagram and like looking at stuff. And I'm <laughs> like, why did I let like, why did I not see that? So let, let me feel a, a couple of things here as far as yeah. the posting stuff. Um, I do have a Facebook group, guys. It is down in the description below. Maz's Toy Box. <laughs> we can tag them in there as well if you want to join the Facebook group. Um. So I can look through that in, in IG if you want, if that helps you out. Um, we can use that, that Facebook group, Mazda's Toy Box, for your pictures as well. So if you want to join that, the link is in the description down below as well. Thanks for reminding me. I, I keep forgetting about it. Max is like, <laughs> you could also do it in a Facebook group. And I'm like, wait, I have one of those. Yep, you, you can do that. You have the technology. <laughs> <laughs> I keep forgetting. So uh, we'll see. Uh, yeah, if you guys want to join, it's linked in the description below. But yeah, sure. Or whatever. All right, there we go. Um, so yeah, let me, because I, I feel like I kind of called you out inadvertently there, Harold. Harold. No, <laughs> no, no. And the thing of it is, and what I want everybody to know too, it's like it, it's one of those things that you kind of have to take, especially if you want somebody to look at something like you want to take constructive criticism, because the fact is there there is a a lot of people out there that are way better than you are, <laughs> and I mean, and that goes for every level. So, I mean, it's like always somebody can see something that can help and, you know, and you just got to look at it that way. So it's, it's never knocking anybody. It's definitely, it helps you, helps your progress by listening to a lot of different people and input and everything like that. All right. We got you, OG. We got you. <clears throat> but uh, here, here's, this is today's, the, the picture for today. Okay. So this is the first picture I took. This is the first way I started with this. And you notice he's not in that same pose that I have him in in the end. Um, one thing that bothered me that I, that I ended up, I didn't realize it for a while. I was shooting several shots of this way. One thing that bothered me was this knee pad. It wasn't turned out right, you know, because his knee is actually, there's this is small little details with the pose <clears throat> that the knee pad wants to sit facing one way, but yet his knee is actually turned another way. So that makes it look off. Um, and then I go playing with the, I, you know, turn his head. Actually, now that I'm looking at it here, it actually doesn't look too bad. <laughs> See what I mean? <laughs> See, there's somebody who's asking about how the likeness is for Carl Urban. There you go. Yeah, it's not actually, bad. It's not bad. It's actually not bad, right? Um, maybe I'll revisit this one later. Um, but there's a lot of times where I'm sitting there shooting, like I got his hand against the wall here, just playing with it, just trying to find what makes him look the most natural. Uh, and I was going to stick with this one with the hand against the wall for the longest time. But then I was like, wait a minute, he's usually holding his gun, like in the scenes in the movie, spoilers, he, he's usually holding his gun with both hands, even when he's waiting behind, you know, something. So I was going for the this here, but if you notice, his hand's not quite right here, and the gun's not quite right yet. So I, I play with this angle, well, apparently I didn't click far enough down, um, where is it? Come on, I know I played with that. Don't tell me I didn't play with it. I mean, <laughs> oh my god, I'm talking trash, I didn't play with it. Cause there it is. No, I didn't. I didn't play with it at all. Well, fooey. All right. I probably didn't play with it because I'd already put this filter on it, and you kind of don't see the hand so much anymore. Um, but that would have bugged me had I left it this color, because you know you can see that hand just doesn't look quite right. The gun's not pointing right. Um, so it's bugging me now. It's gonna bug me forever now. <laughs> um, this is not the best example. Let me uh, let me go back to another set of photos here oh the pun this this is a perfect example all right 
All right, because I went through a lot of different looks for this guy. Um, let's go to develop for these. So, again, my first shot of this guy. Look how dark that is. It's crazy. What was it? Harold, you sent some photos. Yeah, just for after you're done. It's, yeah, that's cool. Okay. Yeah, rock on, rock on. Remind me, though, because yeah. I'm stupid and I'll forget. No, no, you're good. Um, so this is the process. You know, I started off here with the, the one light. I was like, let's see how that looks. And then we brought in some other lights, and then I realized this light was in the background. That's not going to work there. Obviously, we have to move that, even though I want the light showing through. So, yeah, I found that pretty quickly, so I moved it. Um, but it was really, I mean, I went through a lot of different pictures with this guy, playing with the lights, and his face, for the longest time, wasn't looking right. This is one of the shots I ended up using. But I actually, I didn't like any of these shots alone, because I wanted to bring out this bit here. And none of my shots lit him up well enough because this cut in half, this harsh light cut in half, that doesn't work well at all. So, you know, I'll go through and I, I'm still shooting. And I'll play with his pose, too. I, in fact, he, I did several shots where he's in different poses. Um, where's the other one I used, though, for the second shot? So the second shot that I played off of, what was it? That's not it. This one, I think it was this one here. So I brought the the first shot I showed you that was starred in this shot, because I wanted to get this glare off of the uh, metal here. So we played with that, and of course the ending result was this, and I photoshopped the the eye in there because his batteries were dead. <laughs> but oh, and you'll see like this weird outline here. This is bugging me, and that's actually because in Photoshop I content aware filled, so I can add more of a blur to the background. And that's why he's got like this weird halo mm. effect that I didn't notice until later. But I mean, I went through several poses of this guy, you know, different angles because his face wasn't turning out the way I wanted it. I even went so far as to switch out the head sculpts and try different. I mean, I, I went through a ton of this stuff. I even just tried Ooh, this. That shot was really good. You see the wire here holding his arm down because his arm wanted to kind of lift off his shoulder a little bit. I was like, we're not having that. So I put a wire over it. You like that shot? I love that shot, actually. Just I just don't like the plastic of his face is turning out here. Yeah. His face is looking very toy, which is why I didn't go with that shot. You know? uh, so then I tried it like that. And again... I can hear the theme song in my head. <laughs> <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Yeah, but... You know, it, it's just a matter of trial and error. I mean, I could come back and use this shot, you know, or any of these shots, but I take a ton of shots with, and playing around with the poses, especially if something just isn't sitting with me just right the first time. I mean, and then nothing ever does the first time. Shoot. Very true. I mean, look, look at all these different... This is how many times I shot him, trying to find the shot that I ended up using. Well, and in, in the hold. end, too, you can end up cropping it out and finding a nice portrait shot. Yeah. Out of those two, and using yep. using that also. So yeah, um, this one was a, this was another case in point of uh, we didn't go over this at all. This is a that was the original of the shot that I did last week. Uh, let me bring that. I'll use Instagram to bring it up since I got everybody. This is a, you're all hostages today. <laughs> this is the end result picture here. Um, but if we go in the Lightroom. We can see what I was doing here. So I got this guy on a cord, the, the skull is on a cord going up to his hand. So it's not glued to his hand, which is nice. Um, and you notice I couldn't quite, if I wanted his foot on his back, which is, I, I definitely wanted that, I couldn't get his foot far enough for it. So this, this skull is actually a little further back, you know, where I wanted it. But, uh, you know, I was playing around with my lighting for a good while. I actually ended up merging several pictures to get the lighting right. Um, yeah, there's one that I think I use it's flag but then I went back and uh, where did it go and I used that one that one's lighting as well so I merged them together there but uh, oh, that's my final where's the so yeah there's me playing so now his foot's on something else entirely and uh, me playing with the different trying to get some kind of light matchup that I can use and the right angles with the head to, you know, because I've moved the figure. 
And then, of course, I masked the hand back in with the head there at the end. So it's crazy oh, times. I love that the light on the crown of the Predator's head, though. I love that. Exactly. And it wasn't yeah. there in one shot. I had to mix two shots lighting with a layer mask to get that. <clears throat> um, mm -hmm. It wasn't there. Um, if you look, you know, this is... That's one shot there I think I utilized to get some light. Um, anything with the stars on it, I think I played around and stole some light from somewhere. Um, and I, I might have done, with the layer mask, I, I might have even done, like, different opacities with the layer mask so that I could utilize lights from more than one shot. You know, just get that, that stuff going there. So, But I'm just saying, you don't want to fall back on your... your you never. I, I rarely use my first shot. Rarely, will I use my first shot. Um, I'll play. I'll take several shots, even if I think that they're coming out exactly the same. They're not. You know, there's always something like, like this. If you weren't paying attention. You probably wouldn't have noticed that shadow there. That's not supposed to be there. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah. It's, uh, stupid stuff like that. See, it's gone now. That was something I had sitting there in front of the light source, messing it up. <laughs> so, um, enough about me though. I find like we always end up talking about me. Let's go back. <laughs> um, somebody messaged me too. Um, where's H Green? Let's go back to H Green. I want to talk about this guy. Boom. Is that your television or your detolf behind him? That's just the detolfs. And again, and that's one of those, you know, just, you know, the figure sitting on the table. And I'm just going to take a shot of it and post it because I was in the mood. But uh, yeah. No, it, and and if you're just shooting like that and posting, that's that's awesome. That's awesome because I I would have been like, I like this pose, I like this lighting. Let me see what else I can do before I I just decided that's where I wanted to be at. See, but I well, and after doing that, I have some ideas for some other ones I'm going to do down the road. But see, I worked on my pose too. I got his gun a little bit more level. I spread his stance a little bit. Yeah, that you, gun, had, you, you, had told me to work, you had told me to work on that, so I did it. See, it works. Yeah, it works. You, you, you're, up, you're up there with me as far as getting the gun held right. Now he's not <laughs> tilted to one side, because I know we had the discussion a couple weeks ago. Oh, yeah. Well, and it, it, th that figure especially, that's a matter of getting the wrist pegs, the balls turned to get the yep. pegs to go the right way before you even put the hands on. It's like, don't even try to, tr you know, try to twist it and do it with the hand on the peg. It's like, that's just disaster. So it's like, just take your time. Well, you know. we're going to stream Friday this week. And since we do photography and we talk about toys, I think Friday what we're going to do, if any, if you guys are available, that'd be awesome. We're going to do some poses. We're going to talk toys and pose. And I know there's other streamers out there that are doing that. But I think it really works well with the fact that we're also shooting pictures of these figures. And it'd be good to learn some tricks about posing. Um, mm -hmm. And, of course, I may learn something from you guys. You may learn something from me. Who knows? And uh, I think it's an idea if you guys are available. I'd love to. Yeah, well, I don't know idea. what figure we're going to pose. but. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll definitely like I said. Usually the the weekdays is with work and just getting home, getting here a little bit later. But yeah, I'll definitely sneak on. But we'll have but, a stream Friday. Cool. Uh, let's come up with a name with it though, because I don't know. Uh, I have no idea for a name. So mm. I got you on the spot right now. Name, give me a name. In, oh. in, invader poses. <laughs> <laughs> we got a theme. <laughs> <laughs> invader poses. Now, now, I wanted to go with more of a Madonna theme. That's where I was thinking of that mm. Vogue, you know? Oh, uh, yeah. Strike, strike pose, pose yeah. or something. But I think somebody's yeah. probably even using that one already. So. Now, is anybody using Strike the Pose? Because I can see that in like a Star Wars font. Like and Empire's with, the, like, with, with your hands like this and like the you know, hands around the <laughs> yeah, Strike a Pose. Yeah, you could use the hands like this <laughs> along the, 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 the parallels to Strike the Pose. Mm hmm. And then, of course, still use the lines from the Empire Strikes Back with Strike the Pose, and then maybe Madonna's <laughs> face bulk it out in the background. <laughs> I'm sure if you, you Google, it's like searched it on Instagram or wherever, you'd see whether somebody's using it or not. So That's a lot more work. I'll let you guys do that. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, something as simple as the posing, too. I remember with your 501st Trooper, that one, one of the poses that you had, it was like a running pose. And yeah. it, like you said, it goes, it looks really good in this direction. But if you turn the figure a little bit, it's like, uh, it looks ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, you it's just, you got to catch it. You got to, yeah. you got to, you got to, mm -hmm. you got to sell it with also the angle. You got to control the eye. Mm -hmm. Um, with, with the way you're, you're I mean, as a photographer, you can control the eye, you can control exactly where it is. But 
when you're posing a figure, you can't. So you got to just try to get a pose that's going to work for as many angles that are available for people to watch. I mean, there might be an angle or two where it just doesn't hit, obviously. But, like, great example. Um, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but uh, let's uh, make me big. So on the shelf, right, you got Grogu just staring right down with his, his cup there. Let me see if I can get this thing. To, I, I had it focused on... on does it, tell me if it focuses on, on, on him. I know it did earlier. No? Right. No? Nope. Was, was it trying to focus on? Is it on Dread now? No. Still, you. He's still me? Yeah. Yeah, you're pretty... I mean, maybe him next, because he's next in line, so it might it might catch him. Let me see. How about that? There you go. That looks yeah, a, yeah okay. that, that's, there you go. All right, so you can see he's just kind of looking down over there, and the fact that he's... Looking down the, that way, this this pose works from any way I can sit here and walk around it. Because of course, there's a wall blocking me from looking at the back, and I can only get but so far on that side because you know the shelf's there. He's standing out towards a you know further edge of the shelf. So, and of course, the alien right next to him. You really can't see that at all. But there's an alien right next to him, and that pose is in only works from that angle. But yet, that's the only angle you can see him from because that's the way I got it set up. So. Um, let me have it follow me again. There you go. So, I feel like we're focused on me. Harry, tell us something about yourself. Uh, put me on the spot, huh? <laughs> sure. It's like, hey, hold on, hold on. We need a light. Uh, we need a light. I, I, I don't know what to say. <laughs> All right, so now I'm zoomed in, and now I'm just yeah. kind of awkward and, I have to and beep it. quiet. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I don't really. All right, quick. I, Harold, I, I, I love toys. I, yeah, I don't. I got nothing. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I like I like, I like stuff. <laughs> all right, all right. Enough fun again. All right. So, uh, let me see if anybody's tagged me. Let's go look at my hashtag and see if there's any hashtag stuff in there. Oh no. Let's see. I know I've tagged my stuff all the time. Look at that. Oh wait, that's my top stuff. It's all me. Yeah, there's there's other people that have tagged me in the past, but oh, there you go, Mike. Mike Hall has tagged me here. All right, here we go. Cool. Let's take a look. Let's uh, let's let's strike a pose. Let me actually let me do this this way. So I pull it up on one instance. I have two different windows open. Boom. All right. Now we can share it. No, don't move it. Let's share it. Boom. Here's my cause. Cool display. That's nice. Love it. Yeah. He's got Spider Man. Spider Verse. He's got home, uh, home Suit, I guess. Uh, and then Miles and uh, Mysterio here in the background. So let's, let's pull it apart. Let's start with you, Harry. I don't want to be the only person slinging stuff. Let's pull it apart. Let's be constructive. Okay. Let's, let's try to, I mean, just saying, hey, that's great. Um, isn't okay, helpful. first off, I'm assuming that he's using some sort of screen in the back. That's what I'm seeing. Yeah. Um, what I'm also noticing is that the floor, you can kind of see like other stuff going on. I think you can kind of see the green light back there. And then there's a random hand uh, on the bottom right corner there. No, no, that's I don't the know spider, if that was supposed uh... to be there. That, that comes with Miles, I think. It's the spider cat thing. Oh, no, like on the right. No, no. Like a, a little, little bit more to the right of it. There's like a little left The hand. bottom right corner. There you yeah. go. Oh, There's yeah. a little hand right there. <laughs> yeah. Like, is that supposed to be there? Or? Well, if you, I don't know if you can tell from your screen, but this is a layer mask here because you can see through Miles's leg here. Mm, okay. So we okay, get some okay. masking here. But, I mean, the technical stuff is, is, is obviously something he's, he's going to have to work and learn, but... Um, I love this, this whatever diorama piece you're using here. Yeah, that's a really mm -hmm. nice piece right um, there. Whatever you're using for that building top is great. Um, I wish I could zoom in more, though. But your poses in general aren't bad. Um, I really like Spider-Man Noir's. He's my favorite pose. And it's the other poses that aren't quite hitting as well as his is mainly, I think, suit constriction more than the figure or your actual mm -hmm. pose. Um, what was that? Was that a young, young Rich choice? Is that what that? Yeah, norm? I think that's okay. what makes that nor. Yeah. Okay. Um, but like for example, this this miles here, I know you can't get better bend in the legs than that. So yeah. 
if I were doing this, I would have hidden this. I would have found a way to hide that and still use it, maybe utilize it to some degree. Maybe hide him partly behind the chimney so only a part of him is coming out, like one leg, one side. I don't know. Just, just a spitballing idea. But I think um, I would also maybe do like a lower angle looking up. I think that would uh, sell it a little bit more, especially yeah, with the uh, yeah. yeah, and Mysterio is a big man. Like, yeah, then Spider-Man Noir, like, a little bit lower. Yeah, he's kind of looking then, down a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But overall, yeah, it looks still looks pretty good, though. Yeah. Just, I mean, the, just the as he's set up. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the lighting on the figures, I, I think, is great. Um, but it, it just, you can see that you did some masking here. And I've, I've, I've actually published pictures of the same problem. Because uh, you can see that the... I don't know if you can see it, but I can see it because I got it on my screen. But yeah, I do see, see the, a little the, bit the of fingers yeah, are kind of kind of fading out. Fading out. So um, you didn't quite get that layer mass there. Um, and of course, the the edges of the dome here, you're missing some of that. But that that's mm. just technical stuff. You just need to take some more time and work on. I mean, I've done it. Um, hell, my cool uh, grid versus uh, Celtic, which is one of my favorite Alien versus Predator shots. I had to. I wanted to add some texture to the floor, so I put like a cobblestone kind of floor, and I forgot to mask in some of the prayer. <laughs> and it drifts off into the darkness. I'm like, damn it. I didn't notice it until after I posted it. I was like, damn. Um, but no, I, I love the Spider-Man Noir. He's my favorite one. This is my favorite pose of this, this year. And I love how he's on the building. Um, and I see that you're trying to incorporate all these characters, but I th think you made this a little too busy. I think that's the end all be all that I could say that's helpful. You, you went too far. Yeah. If this was just Spider-Man Noir on this rooftop, I think this would be an A plus like nothing. It would have just been awesome. But when you add everybody else in here, it gets just a bit too busy. And or maybe uh, taking Mysterio out and making Spider-Man Noir like the centerpiece up at the top and then the other two around him. Yes. I, I, yes. I actually would have left Mysterio in out of any of the other Spider-Man figures. I would have left Noir and, and Mysterio in mm -hmm. only because Noir can pull off the pose he's trying to pull off. If you leave these other ones in, you need to redo your poses because their leg bends aren't there with the pose that you're trying to pull off. So if you wanted to have one, you know, one, one on one or, or whatever, uh, I think Mysterio personally and, and the Noir would have been perfectly fine with each other and then just take out Miles and the homecoming suit. Um, and it's really, I don't know what it is about this one here, but it's just, the homecoming suit is why I never bought it either. It's got this weird waistline on it and you can kind of see it on this. So. Yeah, so for I'm sorry, me, the... I'll, I'll let you guys talk. Okay. I was going to say also for me, the, the, the storytelling part comes in, you know, and the scene to me doesn't make much sense. Uh, it's like, why is, you know, Mysterio kind of just chilling out in the back and who are their, you know, who are the Spider-Man, you know, aiming at? So that's another thing you want to, you know, take in consideration, just like as a scene, like what kind of a scene are you trying to set up and what kind of story you're trying to tell? Like to me, that's the most important thing when you're trying, you know, take a picture. But, uh, you know, again, my, uh, Mike, you've got some great stuff here. Like I said, Spider-Man Noir is looking on point. I love him. Um, if you wanted to accentuate him even more so than you've already done here, could have maybe thrown a backlight onto him and give him a little ring light on this backside or on this side. But I, really, I'm, I'm completely fine with Spider-Man Noir. If he was just in this picture on top of the rooftop by himself, this would be a, 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 sh a showstopper. This would be like on fire. And I, I and I appreciate that you want to loop, you know, loop in these other Spider Mans and, and make this scene. But I think their colors with the background and the fact that you can't really showcase a pose with those figures in the manner which you've chosen to go about it, uh, it's really just detracting from what really is good about this picture, which is the Spider Man Noir and uh, you know your diorama rooftop thing that he's doing on. So. Yeah, I think just as a photo on its own, like the Spider-Man Noir, by even him by himself, I think that would look really cool with him on the top of that, the very oh, yeah. top of that, and then aiming up. <clears throat> no, I like I even like him shooting down. He could be shooting at anything. Um, Mike, I think he meant the camera. 
And, no, the camera, just yeah. the camera yeah. angle, like coming, yeah, coming from a lower angle. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so Mike calls, man. Can I give you a homework assignment? Can we, uh, can we see you do that? Just, just the one figure, maybe, and uh, change the camera angle. Yeah, you know, just test that out and see how like that looks. See what you can do if you just do it with, you know, with with our suggestions. I'd love to see it. But if not, that's cool too, man. We're just here to help support each other, man. This is. No reflection, because if you know if you want to feel good about yourself, we can pull up some of my old stuff real quick. <laughs> oh yeah, and, and earlier Mike ha he was saying too. Mike Haas said that sideshow is strike a pose. I think that's their contest that they do with like three people with a figure. Yeah. So yeah, he was. Saying people have been tagging early. me. I don't know what this <laughs> stuff is, man. But, uh, I tag all my stuff, so uh, I'm trying to find just my shit. <laughs> without switching the pages, but apparently that's not going to happen. Um, um, oh, we don't even have to go that far back, man, really. Um, but I really want to find ones that really speak out to my some of my errors. Um, well, that, and that one that I did send you to of that Captain Rex was kind of a before in camera with the wrong color, mm -hmm. like cast on the helmet, and then kind of the final photo of kind of like what you're talking about with the heavy mando being able to cast a little bit more light around the helmet and see it like being able to see it a little bit better too um just take taking that time with your light is is huge yeah especially if you're using a bet which i don't use and i can see that what people do and especially like harry and like stuff that he's done like getting that light to match what's on the figure like match the background Match the background. Yeah. So. Man, I didn't realize so many people posted my hashtag. What's up with this? I mean, a lot of this is mine too, but there's a lot of it is not. <laughs> You're a popular uh, guy. I don't know about that. <laughs> I'm just. Well, like, like this one. I probably shouldn't have posted this one. I, I thought at the time it was better than it was. This isn't even the worst. This is. Apparently, 830 people liked it. That's so pretty good to me. Yeah. All right, let's move on then. Because that's not a good <laughs> one. I think that's almost where I want to keep my, I think my page too, where it's more of, you know, like a, a I guess, serious fo photograph, whatever. And then if I'm just taking other random shots, like have that in another place. So it's not kind of yeah. like mixed up with that, that. I can kind of just get my ideas out of my head and just kind of let them go and, See what well, people think. This well, isn't one of those examples. This is just because I have a Spider-Man shot here that I, I'm actually kind of happy with. This is this is a shot that I took on a regular table in my collection room. This is my detox behind it. But it I got it like broken out so much. It looks like it's a yeah, city or like a building. Yeah. Exactly. So, and yeah, the reason I why I, I cropped in this far is because this suit can't pull off the needle properly. So mm. I cropped in tight. You know, so I just got that arm, and you know, this arm, of course, is already broken out. But down here, this is all cropped in because I couldn't get the knee placement to give it that superhero pose. So I utilized what I had here, and I still pulled off a great, I think, a pretty good shot. Of course, Instagram didn't think it was as great, but uh, <laughs> I pulled in a, you know, what I thought was a pretty good shot just because I sat there and did some editing. This is the last time I pulled out my. This is the last time I pulled out that dread, man. February 2020. So wow. today in February of 2020 was the last time I pulled out. <laughs> What's weird about that is February. Wow. <laughs> February, I decided to pull out my dread. What are the chances? Right? Um, um, let me see. I'm just, man, I'm still not far enough down to really give you guys. Well, here's one that just turned out like garbage. Um, I was going for that, you know, that cool look, but it looked cooler than I thought it was, you know? It, uh, I do I like thought, the haze though, it does look cool, yeah. But it's it's swallowing him up, he's way too dark in there. Um, and I got his bandolier on upside down, <laughs> um, and of course, you know, I, I really wanted to sell this, you know, the whole the reloading gun flip thing, but I yeah. didn't light it right, you know, the, it's not mm. lit up at all to sell it, which sucks. Um, I really wanted to sell it, and of course, Instagram told me it sucks. <laughs> so, uh, but that's one that you need, that you yeah. need to revisit then, because you're you're like you're right on 
on the edge of where I've, it needed I've to be. Tried. So. I can't hit that shot right with the lighting. <laughs> it's just driving me nuts, dude. Every time I go to play with it, uh, I've tried it several times now, but um, yeah, it's just been horrendous. Let me go. I'm going. Yeah, look at this. This is early stuff for me, man. Look at this. Just a mess. Um, the pose is very stiff. It's not very organic. Uh, at the time, though, I was pretty happy with it, you know? Um, this is from Vape Fog and not the good fog machine. Mm -hmm. my, my shutter speed is... I didn't even post what my shutter speed was then, but I didn't know how to use my camera yet, so God knows what it was. Um, actually, this one I like, though, but it was the same kind of problems. Um, I actually bothered to do the difficult way and hang him from the ceiling to do this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Instead of just putting him on a stand. Um, let me see here. This is one of my favorites, so I like this one, but the smoke's way too heavy. I saw those hot toys boxes, so it just reminded me I, I've got my Stormtrooper squad leader to open up later, too. <laughs> Sweet. Um, yeah, here's one of the early like, shots here, man. <clears throat> Look at that. I mean, it, it looks very static, very unmoving. I mean, even though I was trying to give life to it, and, uh, you see my I, I'm using a huge aperture right here because I mean, look, both of these figures are pretty much in yeah, focus. Okay, to catch them both, so, yeah. I, you know, if I, if I were able to zoom in from Instagram, this would be grainy as crap because my ISO would have been there because I didn't know what the hell I was doing. Um, so I thought it was awesome, but it wasn't because I got everything in focus <clears> here. I wasn't able to single it out. You know, um, another one, you know, again. And of course, I went and processed it so much it looks so smooth because I, you know, use the smoothness to try to get a lot of the grain out. Um, but it's not lit enough. It's none of that. So I've tried to hide that. Like, <laughs> and, and again, you're just using that app, and it's like the more you do it, the worse it looks yeah. too. And it just, it can't, <laughs> you get to a point, it's like, yeah, I can't save that. <laughs> and it's yeah. not worth it. But, you know, look how no. grainy this is. And this, this definitely looks like a toy on a toy action here. You know, there's nothing cinematic about this at all. It's very flatly lit. So, well, And also, too, like when you when you look at them on Instagram, too, because sometimes I'll look at them there and you see and it must be the way that it compresses like in their program mm -hmm. and, yeah. and yeah. it will make them not look crisp and clean. And then I'm like, wait a minute. And I'll go back to my phone and look at it. And I'm like, there's nothing it's wrong fine. with that. Like, yep, why? Yep, yeah. Yep. So it is, it's that Facebook does the same thing too. So. Yep. Okay. So Mike says his background was Photoshop. I find it very oh, hard it to look at okay. a Photoshop background. It is not easy. I, I agree. Um, yeah. I've because the masking that. tool has been so hit or miss. Where is my game bar? I can't find that. There it is. Wait a minute. Since the masking tool is so hit or miss, uh, I don't tend to Photoshop my backgrounds. I'll Photoshop in, and put in a fake floor, and I'll put in maybe a wall or something, but not a background usually because you have to then mask, use the mask and depend on not having that fringe on the mask to really... I can't think of the last time I used a background. That was if you're going to do that, I do suggest using like some sort of green screen or blue screen. That usually you know gives you Something the most control over key. Yeah, over keying. Yeah, but you still just you faster still end up with with uh, a green cast on your your. You do, you, do. Point too, you so. get a little bit of of a bleed for sure. Yeah, um, so this is why I don't use it. I have a green screen. I don't really use it that often. Um, you know, you can go to the, the to the hardware store. Then get a piece of foam and paint it up for about twenty bucks and make a wall like this. Uh, the foam is like five bucks, and then uh, you know how much you want to spend to paint it. Um, and then you can make it a wall, and you have something. I mean, that's what this is, just an extra piece of foam I had laying around. But I cut up a little bit here, and I put some armature wire in here and painted that to give it that rebar look as best I could anyway. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, that's all that is. And, of course, I carved into it, you know, with a ruler and, you know, something to make some lines in it. One thing I want to work on, too, and again, from working in landscaping, a lot of times I'm able to pick up different rocks and, you know, different materials like that to use. Um, but the the controls for the valve controls for the irrigation systems and they've got all the wires and stuff and they're all like already hooked up on PVC. So I'm going to paint like a lot of those like a single color, whether it's gray or whatever, and do some weathering on it. And it kind of give it that industrial look and try mm -hmm. to build that into a scene. Mm -hmm. That's cool. 
That's yeah, I mean, you can find all your knowledge. Yeah, and you can find like just random things like that too for backgrounds. Like go to the there's a like an antique store that just has basically mm -hmm. old um oh like conduit and different electrical boxes and stuff like that. You can pick up random pieces for 10, 20 bucks a piece and just use it for various photos too for backgrounds and you know, just change the angles of it and the way that you mm -hmm. set it up. So Okay, we had another tag here. Michael, this is this is what I'm talking about. Oh my god, this is so much you rocking it real hardcore there, man. Look at that. Yeah, Simple. I love that. Oh yeah, that's nice. And and of course you said you make your own backgrounds, which is awesome. Um, oh wow. But single focus character and yeah. Awesome. Um I see you don't have maybe as much control over your lighting as you'd want, but that's okay. You'll get it. That yeah. comes, yeah. Because yeah. I mean, if you're going for like a cinematic scene, this this whole scene is, of course, brighter than a cinematic scene would be. But yeah. if that's not what you want. What you want to go for? You don't have to be like me. You can shoot just like this. This is perfect. There's nothing wrong with this at all. I love it. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, but as we know from watching me, is I like that cinematic stuff. So that's, yep. you know, I go <laughs> for that. You're going for awesome. And wait, nobody's like this yet. I mean, like that. Oh my god. You rock! <laughs> you go I'm and support it. Mr. My calls as well here. Yeah, I That's say. awesome, man. I love it. I love it. This is this is much. I mean, I know you want to bring in other characters, but the scene's got to work. It's got to make sense, and you'll see it if you're not too excited to just take this picture. You know, I, I've been known to do that. I mean, I'll take a picture with all this stuff going on, going, yeah, this is what I want, and then you know, you go to share it, and you're like. That's not what I wanted, you know. <laughs> You're no longer in that moment. You realize this is not working. Uh, I don't know how many pictures are just on the cutting room floor for me. That I mean, not just out of like the one sequence. Like there would be a whole a day that I, I, I thought I got the shot that I wanted, and I have a whole sequence of stuff I can choose the pose and everything that you know the lighting, and you know I'll figure out what I'm going to use out of that, and there's not use any of it. Don't even use that figure. Don't even use that. You know. There were days where I was like, well, let me go back to one that I just never posted or something because I didn't like that one. Or I won't post at all. I mean, Jesus, it's crazy, man. Um, and because I like to shoot outside a lot, too, there's times I, I, I look out the window and I'm like, oh, the sun's perfect. I want the figure back, backlit or backlit. I'm going to run out there, hurry up and set it up. And as soon as I do, a cloud right in front of the <laughs> sun. And I was like, oh, because I wanted to blow the aerosol into it and, you know, <laughs> give it some some depth. And yeah, yeah. Didn't, didn't happen. You want, to, you want to give it that. You want to give it that that light rays and stuff, mm -hmm. the depth and stuff. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. I'm mm -hmm. there. Let me see here. Let me refresh this real quick. Okay, cool. All right. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, Mike, that that is so much. That is so much better, dude. That is. I, I still want to see the shot with that you showed us the first time, but with just Spider-Man Noir and that. Oh, I, I think that's an awesome shot. I'll see it. And I love that Dio too. That's just yeah. yeah that'll the, look. Awesome. The lighting was really good on 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 Spider Man himself, and the Dio right. was really cool. And I'd love to see that later on if you have one later on. Um, he did like this one as well. So that's not bad. That's not bad at all. Um, the only thing here, there's not much you can do about it unless you get really good at Photoshop, is to take care of this this jawline from the head, you know, on there. Uh, Impulse Nerd says cinematographer is the best. Oh, thank you, thank you. Too kind, too <laughs> so kind, my friend. We're all top liver here. That's cool. You know, yeah, we fun. will bow to your superiority. <laughs> no. You guys are way, way I, too kind. Thank you. I've always said I take pictures of my toys. I'm not a toy photographer, so that's <laughs> yeah. that, that's what a toy photographer is. <laughs> yeah. just, just taking it, yeah. Literally. <laughs> I like how Mike insists on throwing the cat in every shot too. I was gonna say little Spider Man oh, yeah. there. <laughs> um, no, this is a great shot. I love the pose. Um, the only thing I would have tried to do is Photoshop this joint because I'm I'm like that. But again, you don't have to be like me. Um, but uh, I like it. I like it a lot. I think the pose works. You're 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 covering up the limitations of the suit here with the with the uh, foreground stuff, the elements there, and uh, yeah, I like it. I like it a lot. What do you guys think? I don't want to be the only one thinking. Why do I got to be the only one? Oh, no, yeah. I love it. The posing, everything, yeah. Posing is great. 
All right, it's then. and it's telling a story and everything yeah. too. Not not just the pose, but it's telling a yep. story in it too. So story, yeah. that's that's what's cool about that. I yeah, like man, that. He's doing the shoulder touch, but all over. Yep. Mm -hmm. It's the bad time. <laughs> it's the bad time. So another thing is maybe you know <laughs> uh, having the electricity cast some you know orange light or something on some, on some of the SWAT guys. Yeah, maybe. you might not have the lights to do that yet, but what you yeah. can do if you do is uh, if you have any kind of small light you can put that behind spidey and point yeah, it up exactly mm -hmm. and it wouldn't be completely perfect because obviously mm -hmm. you know if it was emanating from spider-man it wouldn't just be on the underside of their legs and yeah. stuff but you know mm -hmm. it's something that you could forget about and just enjoy the fact that you've got some kind of yellow slash orange light just shining up and giving that blast effect on on the rest mm -hmm. of the, the picture mm -hmm. so and that will also kind of separate you know uh, miles here you know from the swat dudes mm -hmm. as well but uh, again, it's not necessary. Just a pointer if you yeah. have the light to, to maybe utilize it. Um, I know there's knockoffs of these. I don't know how much they are, but uh, these are expensive. These are the Lim Cube ones, but uh, they make knockoffs, and you can probably get them with, you know, this is a, and you can order these from Lim Cube, maybe even use them on them. But, uh, you know, use something like this here to give it that, that orange glow that you want. And you can even get like plastic wraps and different things too. Like I, I've used like a Ziploc storage container that has a red lid and uh, <laughs> shine yeah. cast the light through before I yeah. had you know a panel light. So that yeah. works. So yeah, um, and heck, even these these little panel lights too. It's a Solari Solero. I mean, this thing it was only like oh, forty one dollars on mouse. Amazon. Forty dollars. Yeah. I'll, I'll leave go. it there so they can see them. Forty. Yeah, it was like forty-two dollars on Amazon. I might order some of those. And it's too. Full That's color. RGB too, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and it it gets pretty. I actually picked up this one. I think I had showed you maybe two. I had it for a couple weeks, and then I just picked up another one this past weekend. Yeah. My my wife. And it's one of those usually. Part. Right. Oh yeah. No, go ahead. I didn't mean to cut you off of that. Oh no, no! I'm just saying for the price you can't beat it. Considering a a loom cube for the same thing is going to be 160. Yeah. This this one so cube by itself, like... I think it's 60 bucks just for this one light oh, by okay. itself. I think I don't know. Right. I bought it in a a two pack for 300 bucks. So, and it came with not just the two lights though, but it came with like the gels, like a whole bunch of gels, mm. the diffusers, the barn doors, the snoots. So. It did come with a lot, and it came with a. In fact, here's the carrying case it comes in, but it's not everything's in there. But it came in a carrying case, and you can see some of the stuff, but most of it's put away. So, and a lot of times you can yeah. find codes from people too. Like Jared has one. Uh, do you have one, Harry? Like a. Yeah, I was going to say somebody. One, yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I, I had one, but never really did much with it, so they took it away mm -hmm. from me. Yeah, I need to, I need <laughs> but, to actually utilize one, but I yeah. haven't yet. But, uh, you know, you get the, the, there's more than this. It comes with a lot more than this. This is just another handful that were in here still that I didn't move out. But you know, here's your barn doors, one for each that they go on there. Uh, some charging cables, um, which can probably go over here. So it comes with, you know, the lights would go here and this spot's here. Your two snoots here. Your, I'm sorry, your lights are here in the top bit. Uh, your two snoots here and then uh, stack two stacks of uh, these gels slash diffusers and stuff they go in these spots you know and the stacks are about i think there's maybe 15 or so in total i don't know right. oh and then you get the uh you get you know two of these which will go on the top of that stack like that so it would look kind of like that filled you know on each side there'd be two of those so. i just always take them out i don't ever put them away so i've probably lost so many <laughs> <laughs> part, so, um, but yeah, the loom cubes are more more expensive, and really for what you're paying for, you can probably get better. Um, I, I just kind of went loom cube because that's what I saw people using, and I've kind of they're great it. too, and they're really bright, yeah. and powerful. Yeah, because I actually have the the loom cube air, and it mm -hmm. has like the yellow, the yellow and white diffusers on it. Um, and, but and last that one, I think. Week, that, sorry, I think yeah. that one was. Oh no, I'm sorry. It was only like I think probably around forty. I think those run around forty dollars. Okay, okay. The airs. And then if you want brighter light, though, if you're going to want to shoot at higher speeds, you want to look at our video last week with Mike uh, insightful imagery. We were talking about flashes. 
And flash is going to get you even more light than any of these consistent lights can do. None of these lights are going to be able to get you the light that a flash can get um, if you use it properly. And so we were going over that a little bit last week. And, of course, mm -hmm. check out Insightful Imagery's channel because he uses flashes all the time. So I'm sure he's talking about them on more than just the video that he did with us. So, um, And I was another photographer that I follow uh, on YouTube. I don't think she's posted in a minute, though. Or at least she hasn't come up in my feed in a while. It's uh, four bricks tall. And she actually photographs uh, Legos. You know, little Lego people, but she uses flash equipment and stuff, and she's done some tutorial videos with flashes, so it's definitely something I would look into if you guys are interested in the flash realm, because I don't know enough about it yet. Uh, Kevin, is some of the Ulanzi uh, makes a great light cubes and panels for around $35, so there are plenty of options out there. Um, Mike Halls, I love you, man, but you are never anywhere close to where you want to be. If you're if you're if you're getting any kind of seriousness about it, you're there's always a new <laughs> new shiny that you're gonna want to get. I have mm -hmm. literally like 15 different lights, and I'm still looking for more lights. I'm looking for flash. never never enough equipment. Yeah. Never never enough. Yeah, never enough. You're gonna want the new the new thing. Like like I want lights with the RGB. None of my lights are RGB. I gotta use a a gel for all my lights. I kind of want to get some of these panel sized things with RGB. So I might. Hit you up later, Harold, for a link for that thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'll send one to you. Yeah, I mean, and, and that's one thing, too, you, you learn, especially, like, depending on the color of your figure and what light you're using. Because as you use something, you think, oh, I want to cast this yellow light on this. But that yellow light will change a blue and give it a green hue. Very true. Very true. <laughs> so, like, you've got you've to gotta take your time and cycle through the light and just kind of get that the warmth of that light to the, to the right spectrum just to be able to get a nice... You know, one of, one of the key trip. things that I found with Loom Cube is they are consistent with the color tonalities that they offer. Like if you're if you're shooting, so like this thing here, I can shoot this at different temperatures. You know, all the way up to 5600 from like 32 to 5600. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. any of that range, if I take two of these and put them both at the same setting, they're going to give me the same color light. Mm -hmm. With these newers, which I like these newers a lot, but they are like twenty dollar lights. I put two of these next to each other and put them on the same setting. They won't be the same tone. They'll, right, they'll yeah. be a little off yep. each other. Uh, I've seen that. So, and I'm sure I'll see that down the road that. with that. It, you just yeah. have to look at your budget, and I guess depending on how much you use those, like I mean, over a year or two year span, you probably still can get a pretty good run out of a, you know these forty dollar lights mm -hmm. instead of ha putting that. You know, it would have been three hundred dollars to buy the loom cube panels so well see i, I buy these because they get brighter so. than the loom cubes well i'm done buying them i got four of them that's enough that i don't think i need more <laughs> they get they get brighter than your loom cubes right and right i can use those as like the main light source you know like the the main washing light you know throughout the scene and it's usually my blue because i almost because i shoot indoors i'm never able to get the entire daylight look from from you know man-made lights it's really hard i've only achieved it Very once hard. and that was on that uh on that heavy infantry mando in the desert i think that's the one that i've achieved, gotten the closest to achieving that but achieving a nighttime effect is, is far easier than trying to achieve daytime because nighttime can be any any color as long as it's got some kind of bluish maybe even a greenish or it could be like a bluish yellowish not necessarily greenish but a, a bluish yellowish which it's, uh, it sounds funny because you're like well that'd be green but no, it's, as long as that, that kind of tent, that those those colors working together in tandem, you can pull off a night shot. I mean, no mm -hmm. problem. Um, if you got a blue anything, you can pull off a night shot. Yep. So long as you got a, well, a black background, that helps too. Daytime, a lot harder. You need a, um, I guess since we're on this subject, let me move to my Mando shot. Um what is that noise? It sounded like somebody was trying to break something in my house. All right. So we're moving to this Mando shot. I, I hate to do this to you guys. Um, no, you're good. You're good. So granted, it's not like high noon here in this shot. This is not what we're thinking, right? But it looks like it could be dusk. You know, yep. we could definitely pass for a daytime evening. Because actually, I just realized this. I forgot I'd done it because it's been so long. Um I did put an effect here at the top with Photoshop that looked like this was turning into stars, which I've just now noticed. <laughs> I've forgotten all about it. 
Um, but I see like little white splotches up here, just like a little star field, just giving, you know, like it's turning into like a evening dust thing. So, and the reason why I got this vignette around here is just the limitations from the lights that I have, you know, I just wasn't able to get a full spread of that color on the white backboard that I was using. So, um, I would, if you're doing a white background though, I would suggest a board over a sheet. Um, you can use uh, construction paper type thing. The problem that I've personally had with using construction papers is that it wrinkles very easily. Um, and then, then you're screwed. So yeah. I use a big piece of poster board that I've joined together or whatever. And it makes one consistently white and no extra little wrinkles or anything you have to contend with later. So, but yeah. Nighttime's a lot easier to shoot indoors. Yeah. That was where I was going with that. I'm sorry. No, Somebody good. else say something. I feel like I'm doing all the talk. No, 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 you're good. You're good. I'm enjoying it. It's, I'm yeah. fine with that. <laughs> yeah, it's the same for me. You know, I've achieved you know <laughs> daylight shots maybe like two or three times, but yeah, it's nearly well, impossible. It's still dusk. It's not yeah. really daylight, but it's, mm -hmm. it's still dusk. Um, Mike says he just outfitted himself. All the lights are RGB, app controlled. He's got a new computer camera, cams, tripod, and Photoshop. So I'm good for now. Do you have lightning? <laughs> I'll with, with, with camera wall in Photoshop. If you have that plug in for Photoshop, you should be okay. Um, thank you. Thank you, Mike. Yeah, they do kind of look like posters now that they mention it. Um, I think going back to the equipment, too, it's like one of those things that it's like just the natural progression to you. You tend to sit and even if you're just sitting on your phone looking through things, it's like, oh, wow, let, let me look up. You know, again on Amazon, I, I, that's how I yeah. found those lights. You just you tend to look for things and realize, oh wait, maybe I need this. I need this. I mean, there's so many things that you can that you could buy. But other that's a good start. Then, that's a good start, though. So other than lights, the, the other thing I need is more stands, like stands that I can ma manipulate better. For the, right for yeah. my lights, yep. Yep. <laughs> I need more stand options. I, I need more wiry, grabby arms or something that I can put the light wherever I want it and not have a stand in the shot or something, you know, is always trying to figure out something for that, especially with as big as my table is. Uh, I'm Right now I'm trying to find something I can use that can be a perfect overhead light. And I'm going to have to buy a $200 stand is what it looks like. I'm going to have to buy a, 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 a C stand with a boom arm. I'm just, just going to, to put, grab a drink. I'll be right back. Just yeah, to put something like this on it. All right. Just to put something like this on it for now. <laughs> $200 we're going to have to spend. Just so I can get over the figure without me having to hold it myself while I'm shooting. Because that's what yeah. I do when I get the light over the figure right now. Is I got to hold it. Strike the pose. Yep. <laughs> um, but yeah. So Mike's saying when he moves in June, he'll be, uh, he'll be, uh, what? Wait. Trust me, when I move in June, more, more will, will be bought. bought to make my setup the way I want it. See, you're not done. You said you were done, but you're not done. <laughs> I just we just called you out. You just admitted it. Uh, but uh, impulse nerd, let's see. Do you think atmosphere aerosol would damage a figure in any way, particularly those with fabric? I personally haven't used them. Um, Jared, I know uses them. Do you use atmosphere aerosol? I use atmosphere aerosol a lot too. Okay. Um, I haven't experienced any damage at all. So the one thing is that it could get a a little bit sticky with maybe like a figure like this like you know venom where he has this weird material maybe but with fabric i don't think it should do anything to fabric yeah and if you treat that figure right with the uh, 303 yeah. or shinitsu grease you'll be able to yeah. kind of clean it um, yeah. off but i use a, a a haze machine and i used to use strictly these and this would leave like a a residue particularly i could feel it on the predators i wouldn't really feel it in the clothes though yeah, but on the predators, you could feel like a a texture get on them uh, after a while. But then you you wipe them down, you're good. Yeah, but, uh, 303 is your safe water water. vapor. Yeah. But yeah, it, as far as clothes though, I haven't had any problem with. I mean, I'm mean, using the haze machine. They use them in nightclubs all the time. We wear our clothes in the nightclubs. Haze machine. Yes, it does have something in it because you can smell it. Obviously, you've got yeah. something kind of in there, but. Uh, as of the yet, I have not had any problems with the figure getting damaged from those effects. Now, using regular smoke could be a problem. Yeah, that could uh, be. Obviously, um, with your hot toys, I wouldn't suggest it. I mean, I see Jared all the time shooting with, with firecrackers and stuff. I would never do that around a hot toy. 
No, oh, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> as much as I love to do that myself with those, I think the photos that I po posted in your group of like some that I had done in the past. And it's, uh, yeah, I would never, I, I don't even care if it was my least favorite <laughs> toy. It's not going to happen. <laughs> yeah. Black Series and Marvel Legends at that point, that's as, that's as expensive as I'm going to get mm -hmm. with a figure that's going to be near fireworks. Um, yeah. If you asked me back when I was younger, man, I'd just blow that up with a black cat. Be <laughs> yeah, that's cool. But yeah, the um, atmosphere aerosol, I've never had a problem with it, but it's still one of those things. I, I usually tend to try to spray it in like the background or around it. I don't just don't spray directly at it because yeah. I still feel that it will cast something on there from that, you know. It's, well, you get that yeah, Freon or whatever is in the can to, to help right. keep the aerosol. So you, mm -hmm. uh, if you're using compressed air on your keyboard or something, you get that like that, that, that ridge that, that kind of can, that, 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 I don't know what it is, a condensed something that just kind of mm -hmm. gets on places. So <laughs> you do have to worry about that stuff with the can thing. And, to be honest with you, I don't use the atmosphere aerosols because they, it gets too expensive. It is. What are they? What are, you use them, Harry? How much do they a can? Uh, I think it's like I can't remember. Like maybe twenty, thirty bucks for a can, and it for goes really fast. Yeah. Yeah, and it goes it goes incredibly fast. And yeah. I use fog or whatever in almost every shot I do. I'd be going broke using that stuff. Yep. So I spent twenty or thirty bucks on a. One gallon jar of haze fluid I've had now for eight months, and I've used maybe half of that. I mean, of course, the haze machine was 200 and some odd dollars, but um, still better value in the end. In the end, it's gonna be a better value. I'm, I'm not spending all that money on on aerosol cans, and of course, then you got to worry about the trash that you That's true. from that. So, uh, now if you're going outside in a shoot or something somewhere you need to be mobile, then yeah, I can see the need for the aerosol cans. Mm -hmm. That's but, why I've used it a lot more too, yeah, yeah that way. But indoor, no, I, I shoot indoor. I don't, I don't, I don't use those at all. It's way too expensive in the end. As, yeah. as Jared said too, in one of his videos that he had done. And I, I think it was one of my photos again, that I had posted in your group, but it was um, when you use the fireworks and you spray the aerosol into it, when it, when the fireworks go off, it lights the aerosol. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> so like it makes a glow. Like it's, yeah. I mean, if you catch it right and it's, yeah, I'll, I'll have to just, I'll, find the photo and send it to you but yeah it's probably and andy i think he made a disclaimer and said you're probably not supposed to do this but <laughs> it looks it does look really cool so um max has been uh posted in mazda's toy box uh saying that you guys can post your pictures thank you max you can post your pictures in mazda's toy box if you're not on instagram and just hashtag invader Moz so we know to we can talk about those pictures uh we'll anything posted now i think we'll, we'll talk about next week um Unless, you know, we're still yapping and haven't done anything. <laughs> but, uh, I'm not going to go looking around until next week for new stuff. So and if you tell me you got something in there and I just notice it, we're going to talk about it now. But for the most part, you post on Instagram or Moz's Toy Box, put a hashtag, Vader Moz. You can get to a link to the to the, the Facebook group down below and the information, as well as you can find uh, Cinema Toy Refer and H Green, they're both linked in the description down below as well if you want to follow them on Instagram. Uh, guys, also make sure you hit that like button. Subscribe if you're not already subscribing. Uh, Fridays, we're going to start doing posing. We're going to talk. What should we pose this Friday? Oof, Hopefully, it's not we all have, but I don't know. Something, I don't know e something easy would be yeah. good. No, um, <laughs> just kidding. But yeah, something we all have would be be more ideal like a clone do you have like clone troopers i guess everybody kind of has those right i mean got a 501st i got, first, yeah. I got, 501st, I got cody. stuff yeah. i gotta talk about too shoot cody rex i got cody rex and 501st yeah. yeah um rex i forgot about this he was like hey, let's talk about this stuff i forgot about it um Cody or Rex? I don't have Cody, so I guess it doesn't have to be Rex. I hate messing around with Cody just because of his arm too, with the with the yeah, light up. Be... Yeah, I hate that <laughs> thing. That, that I, I'm not a big fan of, but and I don't even ever use that, so it's like kind of useless. Yeah. Harold, we got this picture here. You you wanted to talk about? Uh, oh yeah, this more. was just basically like a before, more or less a test, just to see where the light is and it's like, Oh, I think I'm going to throw a red light on this. This is going to look cool, you know, whatever, but you can just tell that even just with the background. And then that was the final one. I changed it more to a yellow tone mm -hmm. and changed that. And then again, like I said, you can see 
you know, more of the side of the helmet in the back and yeah. tried to light it up a little bit better. And you got a bounce card on this so, right side, I take it. That's where you got that little bit of light up here. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. See what got see what see what a bounce card does, man. It's not uh, it's not overpowering. It's not giving a whole bunch of light to that one side. It still looks like it's enshrouded in darkness, like the light's falling off or something. But you're just adding a bit more life to it. It's just adding more texture to that side without really lighting it up. It still looks like it's in shadow, and yet not completely blacked out, which is great. <clears throat> um, then you just sent me two more. Which one do you want me to do? First? Oh, either, either one, but that that's just with the aerosol like going or blowing into yeah. the uh the, the crackling balls the crackers, that yeah, Jared yeah. uses. Oh, man. And, and, I mean it's it just yeah, you could you can hear it just <laughs> <laughs> catch. It looks really crazy. good. Which one is the aerosol going uh, into the crackling balls? But what's that? Which one is which? I think it's this one. Well, no, it's it's both of them. It's just it's caught at different points of the explosion well, this basically. one looks like you're about to blow up your house man not just the figure, <laughs> like, oh yeah oh. yeah yeah it was like one of those yeah it was it was a little toasty that i could actually feel the heat like from that <laughs> one but now like that one i i do like the explosion but like the 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 other photo you could see the other trooper like further in the back and i don't like the pose of like her running and it just yeah it's right, it's okay. not great but it was just the whole you know concept and i was just starting to use the fireworks at that time. So. I like this picture better. Yeah, that looks really good. Right, yeah. yeah, the yeah. glow. Mm. It doesn't look so much like you threw a firecracker behind it, more like this one does, you know? Right. I just like how you firecracker. can kind of see that trooper like in the back, like a little bit more in the distance in that, in the yeah, other boat. Like that one. Yeah, 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 with, yeah. The, with the yellow, but I like the fact that they're almost engulfed in it, you know? Like, this is really right. hitting it. This this looks devastatingly deadly to these you, guys. You you can't you can't be afraid <laughs> to get your figures charred. <laughs> Let's put it that yeah. way. Yeah. Which is yeah. why you don't want to use your hot toys for this. No, no, because no. they will suffer fire damage. I will make a public service announcement. It's like don't do this to your hot toys, please. <laughs> but uh, yeah, there we have that, man. Um, what is going on? But there's cool things you can do even again with black series figures like you said Marvel Legends with these sparklers, you know, light painting with sparklers and stuff like that. I mean, there yeah, there's definitely some cool things. So when you're shooting like this, this is a tricky thing to do and and since you're the only one here today that that has shots like these, when you're shooting stuff like this with live ordnance like this, you're limiting a lot of options as far as like finding the exact picture that you want. Um because it's all dependent upon your shutter speed, capturing the exact moment you need to get, and having the wind blow, essentially, the direction right. it needs to go. I mean, for all, no better word, way to explain it, you have a lot of factors to play with that are going to affect the outcome of the shot. Like, I personally, I like this one better, but as you did point out, you're losing this Stormtrooper back here. Um, and to be honest with you, if this was the shot I was intentionally going for and I knew I could achieve this, I probably would have actually given him more of a jumping, like actually flying forward kind of pose. Uh, this front one here, and maybe this one flying out to the side. It wouldn't have been so vertical here, because right. but you don't know for sure that you know that explosion is going to look like it's right on top of them like that, right? Right. Whereas this one, you know, this one here, this, the explosion could be happening anywhere for, for you know all intents and purposes. You don't know exactly where this is happening at. You just know there is ordnance going off near your your characters and they're trying to run away or whatever but this one your ordinance is right there <laughs> this yeah. your, your point of impact <laughs> is right here so if you could plan it out properly and you know exactly what to expect you could you know have your this trooper flying off to the side or something or towards a camera and this trooper flying off to that side a little bit and and, and really you know allowing this this firework to tell the story that it, it is intentionally that, that it would be telling in this shot right but you can't do that. You can't, after the fact, really fix this and, and make it do that. Yeah, and it's definitely it's one of those things. It's a certain time of day. You can't have it really bright because if it's too bright out, you just completely wash out the firework mm -hmm. defect. Um, you can't even see it. All you're going to see is probably a little smoke. You won't even see like any of the spark from it. Um, so later in the day, usually if I ever shoot these, it's like later in the e like early evening before it gets completely dark. And then to be able to get enough light on the figures too that you can see those because obviously, you know the flat you'll get some light from the, the firework itself, but you got to make sure to get some on the figure too. Yeah. So, yeah. You know, uh, well, what I is overcast days are some of the best days to shoot too. Right. 
um, because it's not too much harsh light. Impulse Nerd is asking, how many shots do you take per pose slash photo? Do you stack them? How long do you take to process them? I can, before I let Harry or uh, Harold answer this one, I can say, though, he's shooting the crap out of this to capture this. Um, this is going to be a faster shutter. Actually, are you doing burst shots for these, Harold? Um, more on that one. I usually have a, just a, a shutter or a, a wired shutter. Oh, okay. Um, switch and then yeah i'll just sit there and just as soon as it starts to barely like start to spark i just hold just get it focused in see, and see. just hold it down and then let it run through okay so i mean there's okay. probably 20 20 30 shots sometimes okay 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 but Reversed. during that day though you probably took over 100 shots right oh yeah yeah, pr yeah. probably because i mean and even those fireworks they come in a six pack and i would usually just go through like all six of those like per pack because because you never know exactly what you're getting until it's mm -hmm. so you get back and, and you work with it. Um, mm -hmm. So, what's up, Lake Studios? Uh, Obi, uh, we were just going over this. Uh, what would you recommend for smoke effect that isn't damaging <laughs> the figures or, or my lungs? No vape. I use a haze machine personally. Um, over time, I can't say what it will or won't do to the figures, but n none of these products are necessarily 100% safe, even your aerosol cans or any of that stuff. But oh, a haze no. machine, um, you know, if you got a figure that's like a hard plastic or whatever, you can always wipe it down with some 303 after the fact, and that, that'll pretty much wipe off anything. And clothes, of course, you know, people wear their clothes all the time in nightclubs. Haze machines don't do anything necessarily to that. Um, but it can fill up your room. <laughs> um, Harry, uh, what do you like to rock? You like to rock the uh, aerosols, right? I use aerosol, but you know, like you said, it, they get pretty expensive. So I kind of just stick to this, but you know, not good for your lungs. So yeah, yeah. So I started with this. Harry uses that and aerosol. Harold, uh, just yeah. the atmosphere aerosol, and a lot of it's more. Again, I especially inside, I usually just try to use it in the background of that, catching some light. Mm -hmm. um, and then, but other than that, I'll use it for outside because I do like to shoot outside more. Yeah. Um, there are other things you can get too, is like little humidifiers. They're tiny little, I, I, I've bought them in the past, but they didn't quite, I like to get that soupy fog effects. You know, that, 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 that's why I like it. I like to get that soupy look uh, to my fog. So it didn't do enough for that, but it can add some texture to the air around. And they're like little, little things you put water in them. So it will, it will have water coming out of it, uh, you know, to make that fog. But, uh, you know, but it won't really damage anything. You just got to, unless you're using something rubber, that was when you can damage it. But if you're using a cloth figure like a, like a, you know, a, a Mandalorian or something, it would be fine, you know. Um, let's see. Lake Studio is asking. I'll let you guys feel that while I run to use the restroom real quick. How about that? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And, uh, How hyped are you guys for the last episode of Book of Boba Fett today on the scale of one to 10? Also, may the fourth deal with this episode. <laughs> how, do, how do you feel, Harold? Oh, God. Actually, I mean, I, obviously, I've got, like, really high hopes for it. Um, I think the biggest thing that I've seen, and I, I've seen a few other people, or that I've thought, and I've seen other, you know, a few people think the same thing, too, is that I think they kind of almost titled this wrong instead yeah. of being the Book of Boba Fett. I think it's almost like what they're doing with Ahsoka with the Mandalorian with Book of Boba Fett is kind of like a Clone Wars. Yeah. But instead of, give, you know, giving it one title throughout, they've given each section its own title. So I think it's, I think there's just a bigger story to tell. And I think, I think that's so. kind of what we saw last, the last yeah. two weeks. Last two I mean, episodes, it was, yeah. it was too much of a, uh, I think a slap in the face, I think for everybody too. So, I mean, obviously everybody jumps on that and it's, it's fair. I mean, it's like, yeah. even I thought as much as I loved him, I still mm -hmm. thought the same thing. Yeah. Um, but I, I see some pretty big stuff happening in this one, so I'm looking forward to it. For me, I'm a little bit skeptical. Um, the last two episodes were great. That's honestly what I want to see. Um, I don't particularly have a problem with it not being about Boba, because to me, you know, it's a Star Wars show, right? So if you get right. good Star Wars content, I'm not going <clears> to <throat> complain. My main gripe with this episode is Robert Rodriguez. Um, the last uh, right. two episodes that he did, I wasn't a big fan of it. So today he's That's doing fair. it again. So I'm hoping that it's not the typical thing that he does. 
I'm hoping to not see, you know, Power Ranger bike running around. <laughs> I, I'm hoping to not see right. any of that. So, yeah. So more back to the season two of Mandalorian episode than yeah. when Boba came in rather yeah. than what he did here, right? No, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. no, that's that's a valid point. No, I definitely can see that. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those things I always like, I always joke and say, like, I drink the Kool-Aid, I want to be positive and, yeah. and soak it all up. And like you said, it's just, it's it's still good mm-hmm. Star Wars content. It's just yeah. like, wait a minute, why, why are they doing this? But um, I, I know, especially like with, I know this is a Favreau story, really, and his... Yeah you know, whatever. But again, with, with even Filoni, like he's always said, like he's always planned a beginning and an end and some things will kind of like move through as they go through these stories. So it's like, mm-hmm. I, I think they're definitely heading in a direction they want to head. I, I don't think it's yeah. just being, you know, made up as they go along. Let's put it yeah, that way. Yeah. For sure, so. for sure. I can see that. But yeah, I'm hoping that, you know, they just have Boba do something, something. that redeems him a little bit and, you know, All keep right. the freaking helmet on. Just ride I mean, that just, rancor. Oh, just kill someone, yeah. Ride, ride, ride the rancor and yeah, kill people. Yeah, ride the rancor, right? Like, that would be <laughs> crazy to see. All right, Hashtag so... Uh, ride the rancor. Yeah. We're, we're going to divert from <laughs> Boba Fett talk for a minute. Obi, yes. uh, it says they just inv- invested a full-frame mirrorless Canon camera trying out some macro lenses for, t- for toy photography. Um, Obi, okay. what scale toys are we shooting? Because that's going to really dictate what size, what, what kind of macro lens you're going to go with because i like for example i got a 100 millimeter macro i rarely use it because i'm shooting in six scale um and really my 32 millimeter for my lens is more like a 50 millimeter because i do have a crop sensor so that's almost all i use so it really is going to depend on what what scale figure you're trying to shoot um one twelfth and one six i think a 50 millimeter is the nifty 50 is probably your best bet i think it's going to be great for pretty much everything you're doing Obi. what do you guys think uh, that's what i uh, use too yeah the nifty about 50? 50 about 50 yeah millimeter one six scale so i mean and mostly i've used my my 50 mil uh, 50 millimeter kit lens but i have used a macro lens i think that rex shot and my kylo shot those were with a macro okay so All right yeah. yeah, there's nothing wrong with them. I just rarely so, yeah. use them. So if you if you need a, a lens that you're going to use, I would go with a 50 millimeter. Now later on down the line, you can try maybe rent a 100 millimeter or something, but mm-hmm. you'd probably only ever use them for the 112 stuff. You, I, I wouldn't think you'd ever use them for the six scale stuff, um, not intentionally. Um, let's see. Okay, Let me, I'm just looking through the stuff here. Uh, Yes, Obi, I agree with that. <laughs> the, yeah, the second is, it statement. 50, is it is it a one point two? Is that what that ends up? At? I don't have a fifty millimeter. I have a thirty two. Um, so, oh, so it's not the one point. What the nifty fifty is that one point two? I'd have to look at the aperture. I didn't even think about what the aperture is. Uh, can God bless it. You're not going to tell me right here, are you? Can you guys can talk? I'm googling. Oh, you're good. You're good. Fine. F1.8 looks like it's a nifty 50 is 1.8. So, yeah, <clears throat> that'd be good. 1.8 is nothing to laugh at. Um, I don't have it though because I have you know the the EOS M camera you know with the that that uh so it uses the m adapter so i have to use uh an adapter to use the ef lenses so i don't have a 50 i do have the 100 millimeter ef lens and i rarely use it rarely ever um impulse nerd how important is figure sharpness in your photos that's an interesting one because um, for me, since I'm doing like, you know, that more cinematic kind of look, I actually like having some grain in my pictures. So, yeah, not complete sharpness. So it really depends on what you want to do. I mean, they do have they do have filters that, you know, that you can bump the grain up. So I guess maybe people do like that look, too. Yeah. But I think it really does. It just depends on the intention of the photo, the like the mood of the photo, the lighting. Mm-hmm. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, it just it really just depends on what you're going after. I mean, yeah, if you're really, especially like a portrait shot, like I feel like that one, like portraits need to be super crisp and clean. Yeah. But I think sometimes, like you said, in a scene when you have a background and, and you know, and doing the shots that you do, it almost does make sense. So it doesn't make it stand. It makes a blend in almost more into that screen mm -hmm. instead of being a separate part. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. As far as sharpness, though, it, it's really going to depend on, on what kind of figure or photography like just like Harold said what, what exactly are you doing with it if you if you're doing a portrait or something where you're you're like got a real good focal endpoint like you're just doing a headshot or whatever you're going to want that sharpness um if you're doing any kind of action shot you're going to give it that that more lifelike graininess not like overly grainy like you're using the wrong ISO or something way too high like that <laughs> but, you know just something that gives it that that feel like it's something alive and not just a static toy which is one of the things I go for all the time when I'm shooting what I shoot. You know, when I, I got the, the haze machine running, and that's all just to give it that texture that you know, I probably could just save myself some money and just use a different lens. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> Obi, uh, let's see. I have the 50 millimeter, but it's the bigger aperture. Okay. Um, so, you, yeah, if, if you want. Uh, the ability to get the best aperture, you want a, a, a lens that doesn't change focal ranges. You want a static lens. Prime. So if it's made at 50 millimeter, that's all it shoots. Um, if you're going to shoot with any kind of lens that, you know, like like my M50 comes with a 15 by 45, it can't get down to a one point whatever. The lowest it's going to get for aperture is 3.5 or so. So it's really going to, yeah, you got a focal range you can play with, but it's really limiting on your f-stop. So it's stuff that you want to pay attention to. But Obi, you really like the 85 millimeter. I can tell you, though, from my experience, shooting six scale and even 12 scale, uh, I don't have an 85, but I got the 100 millimeter. But then again, I'm using a crop sensor, so it's probably more like 120 or 130. Um, and I have to get way away from the, <laughs> my subject. Uh, I didn't get the speed booster, so the the... You know, I only got the adapter and not the speed booster. I didn't know what I was buying from, so I really need to get the adapter with the speed booster and that'll help me get that crop. It's, uh, it's crazy. It's, it's crazy with, with uh, how far away I got to get just to use I don't know what an 85 would do, per se, because I'm using mirrorless with a crop sensor. Uh, you use a crop I think, sensor. I'm sorry, and I think just like depending on like what lenses you get with your camera, if you do have multiple lenses, I think the best thing to do really is just take take photos with both of them and just kind of see like what works out. I'm so not technical, <laughs> so that's yeah, that's yeah. I mean that, that's really the way that I look at it. It's just like and I, I remember even Jared saying that he goes, "I really don't know. I just kind of go through and let's <laughs> let's see what looks good." And I, I think it really does come down to that, really, in it the does. end. Yeah. So we're all just know, learning as we go, yeah. man. If you asked me a couple years ago, I couldn't even tell you what I'm spewing right now. I'd be like, "What is he talking about?" <laughs> yeah, um, and I still don't really know it all. Um, yeah, I will never say that I know it all, but I can give you my insights and. Same with Harry, same with Harold. We can, we yep. can just give you our insights and what we're seeing of what we might do to circumvent you sending me more pictures. I sent you one. I just sent you one. It's something that I turned into a black and white and it was a little grainy and I wasn't super happy with it, but somebody even said it kind of like it just like it. more or less set the mood. And this is an older like photo too. Oh, wow, that it looks great. Bright. And that's what I'm saying. It kind of gives that, that old photograph kind of look to it so it, it, again it just it totally just depends on like what you're what you're going for is it is that real. the germans because that's what it looks yeah, like it ba yeah. basically really basically does. they are right they're supposed to be <laughs> yeah that looks great space, getting, space germans yeah getting uh, like a Nazi germany germans. feel from this man i'm not saying it's <laughs> a good thing as far as no Nazi germany, but they really <laughs> look and feel world war ii-esque kind of great you got some grain in it, man. I like it. I can see yeah. some grain to it. Yeah, because I, I was under a bunch of trees, and you know, I I sprayed probably some aerosol behind it. You can obviously see that. So I mean, it was just kind of like I like the setup, I like the look of it, and then I I just put a black and white filter on it, and I'm like, oh, okay, that I think that looks okay. So again, for one of my earlier ones, I'm actually really happy with that one. Yeah, it's gorgeous. So I love it. I you. love it, man. Have you shared this one on Instagram? Uh, yes, yeah, I believe it. It's like way, way back. 
I, yeah. Well, now I'm going to have to go look for it. Make sure I give it some love. Because <laughs> I love this. This oh. is great, man. This is beautiful. Yeah, this makes beautiful. me want to use more black and white now and play with that. Yeah. I don't usually do it. Um, now, I know, and I'm, I'm sure there's definitely benefits to shooting in black and white rather than trying to change and filter, you know, filter it out to make it black and white. So, and I've, there's different types of black and white. So it just really what. Mm -hmm. Uh, see, Obi is asking. Uh, no, wait. I meant impulse nerds first. Uh, what type of Instagram accounts do you think is interesting? I don't know what that means. A full-on portrait only, diorama only, or a mixture of everything? Um, I follow everything. Yeah, but is I think I it's think what he's asking, create what he's and, creating. You mean? Yeah, I think what impulse nerd is asking though is like, uh, if you know, should you mix your account up with different things? You know, like oh, like, okay. I would suggest if you're going to do photography, you have an account just for that. Yeah, if you're going to do something else, have an account just for that. You can make multiple accounts. It's not mm -hmm. fun to keep up with, but you can make multiple accounts and you just want to try to keep that on brand. You want to keep that spewing out. Like That's, for example, why I'd, I've stopped putting any of my YouTube stuff on my Instagram because it's my photography account. <clears throat> so I'm not putting up little banners or whatever saying hey i'm going on youtube i might do a story but i'm not doing like a yep. news feed or whatever they call it mm -hmm. uh for for my youtube which you know, and i don't get a lot of response when i do it either most people just ignore it so um i've even lost followers from doing that so oh, i try if, to stay if it's on not point. what they want to see they yeah they just move along yeah um <laughs> so obi was saying taking photos of the face sculpts on hot toys is a game changer you you really can't see the details with just the human eye. No, no. Uh, Hot Toys face sculpts can be really awesome, but I try not to focus personally on the head sculpts too often unless it really sells because it can sometimes not really sell. And it is all about the angle you're looking at. Like my Ripley. My, my Ellen Ripley is one of the only Hot Toys I have with a head sculpt. And mm -hmm. there's certain angles that that head sculpt works. There's other angles where I'm like, this is horrible. This is not what I want. It's... <laughs> I mean, yeah. So. Now, especially if you're shooting with a macro and you're you're you know getting that super sharp detail, it can pull out the flaws <laughs> like really easy, yeah. and it just um, and just emphasize those too. So yeah, I'm trying to think of other ones that I've done with that. But sorry, uh, Mike Hollis said he posted another one to Instagram. Ooh, oh, we have got a couple here. Oh, nice, Mike Hollis. What is this effect you got going on here, though, Mike? This is. You got some weird bone. filter going on here. Oh, I do see the filter now. Oh, and that looks pretty good, but whatever yeah. filter you got going on here is throwing me off. I, I, I don't know if that's intentional or not. I mean, I think you had another one here. This might call as well. Yeah. This the the lighting composition is not too bad here. You you've blown out Hawkeye though a, a bit. bit. Blown out a little bit. Yeah. yeah, he's a little blown out, and uh, the pose is really stiff. Um, I personally would have worked a little bit more with it to find a pose that worked a little bit more realistically. This looks, the pose is more doll-like for me. Did I say enough? Did I rip it apart? <laughs> I, yeah, feel no, bad. No. I, I, I think when know. it comes to filters too, it's like, and I'm probably the biggest offender. It's like, I should have an intervention probably <laughs> because when I first started off, like that's what I would do. I would try to use that's that. And I was know. thinking it was helping, but it was, it doesn't really in the end. Um, and even my son would pick on me and say, Dad, why, why are you doing that? Like, it, yeah, so. Now, see, this, uh, this that's, is that's a nice cool shot. shot, though. Yeah. This, this is that's a cool. much better version because uh, you're utilizing the limitations of the figure with the pose. You're still getting that, that warm moment that they just had in the last shot. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, is that even Hawkeye still? I don't know if it's Captain. That's Hawkeye. Um, you're utilizing the warm moment from a shot, but it looks real because you're shooting yeah. from the angle that works with the pose of the figure mm -hmm. and what they can do. So, oh, so the Thanos head. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even notice that. See, I was too busy looking at the focal point of the picture and not going to look around for Thanos' head. Um, <laughs> that's a good see, shot. That's where I really, hey, I really like the go. black and I really like the black and white. That that's that's yeah. like perfect for that type of mm -hmm. shot yep, too. Yep. And this is amazing too, Mike. Yeah, this is, like, this looks oh yeah, good. see, this there looks good. Go. Um, although I would have come in from that from camera left here a little bit with that yeah. longer leg. I would have shot up from that leg. As the way I would have done that, I would have had my camera over down this way, mm -hmm. looking up, yep. to get that longer look of the figure. 
as far as the composition goes. But the colors of lighting on him was pretty great. I like it. Yep, and of course, you left the cat in the picture. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> I love it. I love it. What else have we got here? Okay. All right. So we'll leave it on that. But uh, there's a few other questions when we look here. Let's see. Where did I miss over there? Uh, um, what were we talking about with the background? Oh, with the black and white picture, I think, is what this question was referring to. Was that a background or a computer screen? Or the For the black and white German-looking World War II thing? Oh, that was outside. That was an outdoor photo. Right, so it was real world. It was, oh, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. Uh, Lake Studio is asking, how do you guys feel about Clarity? Which is, um, in case you don't know, Clarity is a thing you can play with in Lightroom um, down here. So how do you guys, uh, see, for, for, for me personally, that's one of my favorite things to use. For example, when I take a photo of my 501st, Clarity enhances the detail of the armor. It makes it pop. Clarity is actually a very useful tool. Uh, so if I use, I use it. it it can really bring out highlights without, you know, like exposure does too much. But what Clarity does, it just really, sh it basically sharpens your highlights. That's what it does. It sharpens your highlights and makes them pop even more. Um, I like it. I like it a lot. As you see, I, use it. I don't use it all the time. It really depends on, you know, I'll, I'll look at it, of course, but I won't use it all the time. Let me find my actual final. You know what? Let me just go back to over here. Let's go back to today's stuff. Man. Let's, uh, where is today's picture? Is it this one? This one? There we go. So, yeah, so you could go in through. And I didn't use the clarity on this shot too much because the problem with this figure is his face, even if I diffuse the light, can really pull some glare, some highlights, right. some really white plastic, plasticky like glares on his head sculpt. So I didn't play with the clarity, but if I play with it, well, it's actually I've already muted the glare so much. All right, that's not the best example. Then let me move to this one because I think that's yeah. This is one of all my here's all the stuff I've done here. So you see, I still didn't play with the clarity, but if I go over to mask, no, is this not the one with the mask? Oh shite! <laughs> I don't know where it went. There was a mask somewhere where I muted. The highlights that were around here, you can see it kind of still, but I, I'm I I've made a layer mask, so I was able to just highlight the face and then bring down these whites, so they weren't so overpoweringly glary. You can see them; they're still kind of there, but uh, they're nowhere near as reflective or whatever as they used to be. So, um, so in this figure, in this shot, I did not use the clarity feature too often. But I have used it in the past, and that's the thing with it being a toy. It's like obviously it's made out of what it is, so you but you don't want it to be reflected like his helmet. So that well, it's that just the finish they use on his paint job. It's not the material. It's it's right plastic or whatever, like every other. But toy. it just gives it that. Yeah, it just gives it that look, though. But yeah. whatever whatever finish they use to seal the paint on there, it's mm -hmm. very reflective. It just really. Pops the light now, out. now even the clarity um, control, like on the app that I use, I think the thing that I've noticed that if you do have a grainy photo, the more you try to make it or use that um, clarity, it brings out the graininess and makes mm -hmm. it yeah. really makes that blow out too. So that's yeah, you just more or less it's the photo that you start with too. Yeah, clarity and texture can both do that. But if you're using Lightroom, mm -hmm. the great thing is is um, let me just I'm coming down. Light. I'm coming down to Atlanta, and you're gonna give me lessons too. By the way, so well, if you use I'm, I'm, I'm not that far away. So <clears throat> if you're using Lightroom, this is one that I'm not. I didn't use. So that if you're using Lightroom, you can go to select subject mm -hmm. with your masking tool here, and it's detecting my subject right now. It does a pretty good job, right? So now with that subject selected, I can do all this, even clarity. I can just play with the clarity on just him. I can just oh, do the cool. texture on just him. Oh, see and, that's yeah. Um. I can play the contrast on just him and the high exposures and look at that. I mean, that's just because he's masked. That's, that's just right. that. So I could do all that kind of stuff. Um, one of the other things I, I've stopped using, actually, where is it? Uh, there was a gradient tool they used to have in Lightroom. What happened to it? Um, 
I'll just add one here. Oh, there you go. Gradient. Look at that. Linear gradient tool. Um, all right. So with the gradient tool, what the cool thing is here is I can I can bring in the bring down the shadows more. Maybe add some blackness to it. Oh yeah. I mean, I'm not saying you'd go this far, but I'm just showing you that you what, can, what it can do. Yeah. You can use the tool and really just kind of. Uh, do all kinds of stuff with it. You can make it brighter if you want, like there's light source there. That's pretty cool, too. It's pretty um, convincing. Yeah, actually, it does look pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I haven't used this tool in forever. Um, <laughs> and of course, I can just take it out, too. I can just remove it. Um, I can just remove that. Oh, well, no, wait. What did you do? Pull Z it out. I don't know what I did. Yeah, control Z. <laughs> um, yeah, but uh, so it's now it didn't used to be under the masking tools, which is why I couldn't find it. So, you, what you do is just add a new mask. I'm gonna do a radial gradient this time, and let's radial gradient, which is isn't that cool? You can make it different, like look at that, it's more flat, right? Yeah, it's still round, but it you know, look at that, isn't that crazy? You get like three dimensional radial tool, yep, yep, uh, instead of just your flat, you know, whatever radial tool, you can make it like this. I don't know how that would work, but let's let's try it. Let's just bring up the highlights. Just oh, okay, that's weird. Uh, maybe the shadows. Yeah. You can do that. So you can make your own light. Wow, you can make your own light beams here. Let's look at that, man. I yeah. can add more. Uh, let's do another one. I'm not saying this is what I would do, but you can sit there and uh, yeah, it's keeping the same settings and stuff too. And I can, of course. Change the direction of these guys here. I can select this one. It kind of gives it that feeling if there were slits of like light shining yeah, from the ceiling yeah, or something. Yeah, yeah. 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 Isn't that yeah. freaking awesome? Yeah, I just learned good. that today. That I just really good. <laughs> that is awesome. Forget Photoshop. I mean, look how easy that was to add light rays. Oh my god! See, yeah, just because somebody good. asked a question on your stream and yeah. they helped you, they helped you out. <laughs> Damn! I mean, this look like light rays. That's awesome. It really does. Or if you had like a flashlight or any other type of light source, you could have that with like a like a flare next to the light and, and make it look like it's illuminated. Yeah, that's cool. Oh my god! <laughs> and I can go back and edit this too. Watch this. He's gonna be like, "All right, I gotta go and work I'll do this for every single shot." Here and like, Oop, let's make that bigger. And then go back. Look at that. Yeah, I'm gonna have to try this too. That's pretty. Yeah, he's like, we're all gonna go. I think I need Lightroom. That's that's what I need. <laughs> well, the nice thing is with Photoshop, Adobe platform is you can there's a package we can get Lightroom with Photoshop. Mm -hmm. Um, although if you need to add anything else, it's probably better to just get like the whole suite. It's actually yeah, it's actually awesome cheaper package. that way. <laughs> Once you do that, because then you can get like you know Illustrator and Illustrator. you know. Uh, Oh, even Dreamweaver, yeah. which apparently is now owned by Adobe. Hmm. Um, I don't know if anybody creates an HTML anymore with that, but you know, hey, there you have it. But dude, holy crap! <laughs> yeah, I'm floored because I mean, there's so many times I'm sitting there trying to get the light ray to work in the picture, but I'm not shooting at a fast enough shutter speed. Yeah, I don't yeah. have light to do it, and so I can't capture them. But there, boom. Yeah, but done. it's like a street, like a street light was behind them, and you know the light shining through something, and yeah, yeah, yeah. it's gonna get it better. Kind of check, this out. check this out. You want to see something even better? Check this out. Uh, where is it? Come on. Um, I can change the colors of the light rays too. Oh, oh nice! Um, it's interacting. Well, if I use fine adjustments, it's probably better, but. And I can sit here and play with the haze. That's more like a color. It's like a burn. So, yeah. Um, but no, um, I got these weird colors going here. Yeah. Just control Z out of it. Hmm. I want those colors at all. I don't know what I did. All right, I think I'm done. But, oh, all right, there we go. I can go play with the color. Oh, snap. That's what I want right there. Oh, there look you know. at that. Yeah, there you go. That's what I was looking nice. for. There you go. Look at that, That's man. Cool. I, could, I could just let go of my button anytime now, and it could be whatever color I want that light to be. Oh, 
that's sexy, sexy. <laughs> oh, a little bit too pleased with himself at the moment. Dude, it's like I just found like the Holy Grail or something. <laughs> I feel like Indiana Jones, and I got the the. Heck yeah. I got the I got the art the lost art mm-hmm. mm-hmm. with that little golden statue. I'm just waiting for you to come up and go. I want to beat you and like take it away or whatever. Or whatever <laughs> See, but it's like finding things like this is cool because it's like again, if there was a photo that you had something that wasn't working out, now you can kind of go back and maybe use not exactly this tool, but find tools on here that can end up you you know yep. working better for you. So. What's funny is, so this is Lightroom Classic, right? They have another Lightroom. It's just called Lightroom, right? Uh, and now I'm not going to update you right now. But hmm. I can do, I think, everything over here. I don't know what the differences are. It's just one of them seems a bit easier to use than the other one. Um, I tend to use the Classic one because it seems to have more control. But I think I can do everything in this one. And the other thing, I always import to this one in the end because it can upload to the cloud, which I can pull it on my phone and do all that. But, yeah, I've never, I've always used the other one over this one. And I don't know if it's just a matter of just getting used to using one or the other. I mean, let me, let me see. That's color. Where's... See, I don't seem to have the grading. I don't see any of the grading stuff. Because what I used was a gradient. I don't seem to have any of that control. Mm. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> they, they do. Oh, go away. What are you doing to me? No, I don't Charm want to take a quarter. I'm doing something. <laughs> let's, let's click on this guy. Hold on. Let's see what this, I don't want a tour. Leave me alone. Oh, there it is. Yep. There it is. <laughs> I gotta wait. I gotta. Oh, my wheel is turning it. That's cool. All right, come on. Give me this. There we go. I'm just gonna play with this here for a second. I think like bit. one like going over his helmet too would look cool. Like, uh, hold on, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Come on, <laughs> faster, <laughs> faster. <laughs> I don't have this, so I'm just enjoying by t- like telling you what to do. <laughs> All right, but let me see if I can. Now where'd they go? Oh wait, I gotta give them some properties, don't I? Uh, exposure. Ooh. Oh, look at that. <laughs> oh, that's so awesome. Yeah, that's actually pretty great. It just adds that depth to it, like and extra. Like, colorize and maybe get a little bit of. Oh, boy. Look at that. It looks like some daylight coming in. Oh, my God. Had I had this knowledge. And with that shine, with <laughs> that shine that's doing, already. Man. That shine that's already on his helmet, it kind of. And it works. It, it, works. it, works. it, it actually works, works kind of right Perfectly, there. Yep. Oh my god! If I had this this knowledge eight hours ago when I posted the Instagram, <laughs> I'd have and a million he, followers right now. This is crazy. And, and even on the arm, there's already like some light there too, and it actually kind of makes mm-hmm, sense mm-hmm. even on that too. So yeah, that's cool. Holy crikey! Uh, well, and, and, and I know you're having fun too, but I am going to end up tapping out. I was going to send you a message, but it's easier to tell you because, right. like I said, I had just got home from work, so I'm gonna. No, I get you. I get you. Um, I'm gonna head out. I, mean, I was about sure, to start sure. talking about Boba Fett at this point because we've I've done just got all excited. Oh, we talked when you when you walked off. We we already talked about that. <laughs> I know, and I missed it. I, missed <laughs> it. I wanted to talk to you about it specifically because you weren't here last weekend. Oh, right, right. And did you catch all the stuff we were talking about last weekend with the with the the Barris stuff? Oh, the Barris off. Yeah, I was I was listening. Yes. You was listening? I was listening, yes, with the symbol that was in the room, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. but apparently it was brought to my attention that that it's like all down the hallway that the crest is. So that, can, that might not be mm. her room because it doesn't look like a room. Uh, apparently yeah. all down the hallway to her room is that crest. Uh, if you watch Clone Wars, the, like earlier in the episode when he's walking mm-hmm. to her room, that crest is throughout the whole, entire hallway oh, too. okay. So they could just be down that hallway, but I can't imagine what else is down there to be. I mean, there's there's always that chance for misdirect, but there's always still, especially with Filoni, there's something's there for a reason. Like, there's never like just a symbol thrown in somewhere for you know that doesn't mean anything. So I, I almost 
see that meaning something. All right. But Mike, we'll pull that up, but we'll talk about that after uh, Harold goes. But uh, before right. he goes, before you go, one more thing, yeah. though. Yeah. Now, everybody seems to think, for whatever bloody reason, I don't think it's going to happen, but everybody seems to think we're going to get Mace Windu as one oh, of the people God. that helped save Grogu. God. Which, that is not as far-fetched, but the biggest far-fetched thing that I keep hearing people talk about is we're going to see Han Solo and Chewie in Book of Boba Fett tomorrow. Or <laughs> I don't see it. I don't yeah. want it. I, I I think it's ridiculous. It's too out of the blue. Yeah, he's... I, I mean, I know Boba Fett's changed his ways and stuff like that, but I still see kind of Han is too much of a on the opposite side of where where he was that Han wouldn't come to his aid, and especially what he did to him. <laughs> so yeah, I, I don't think Han would be there. Um, the Mace Windu, like I, I think it's like as much as I like to to look back at the Darth Maul arc and all these different things that have happened in Clone Wars and characters that have come back. I and, and maybe they can make it cool, but I don't. I just don't think they need to do it. That's that's just my opinion. But Mike thinks it's gonna be an after credit scene with Han and Luke and all them coming back to bring Grogu back to Din Djarin. I mean, if it's not part of the main story, maybe yeah. that makes probably more sense. I, but, I honestly, I don't want it. I think but, I, I I personally feel, and I know you've got to go, so I'm, I just want to express this because I don't right. know if we'll talk about it after today because you know the right. episode, the new one comes on. But honestly, I, I, I feel like throwing him in now is just shoehorning him in just for the sake yeah. of shoehorning him in. I mean, it just... If, I mean, at I, least Harrison Ford's Han. I don't want it. I don't want a Harrison Ford Han. I think they're going to go with the young Han. They're going to go especially with the guy if, that played him in Solo? Yeah, um, especially if, they're, if they might do something with Kira, maybe, then I can see why he might show up. But Kira yeah, makes more sense to me than, than Han. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I don't want Han. Maybe Lando. Yeah. He makes sense to me. Yeah. Han. <laughs> See, I mean, Han... I guess and Han would have made sense more in a in a flashback than in current time. Yeah, I think yeah. if anything, I... it would have made sense to story that way. Now, I love Solo. That's I I actually really love that movie. So I have to I, agree with you on that. I, I like and and that's and, and part of that is like my kids kind of coming up in whatever era of of movies, and that was the one that we. Uh, like as a family, that was like the first one that we all went and saw together. Um, so maybe that's part of it too. But I just, I actually really like that movie. So I thought Han Solo was a great movie. I don't well, know why people hate on but, it. Harold, if if, yeah. uh, if I can dig it up, I think I got a few extra posters for that movie. Oh yeah, my god, I'll probably poster. cry if you do that. No, no I'm just kidding. Um, but no, I do. I absolutely love that movie. I think that's probably outside of like Rogue One, obviously of current movies. I probably just. Usually those two movies I kind of have on a loop. <laughs> and Actually, just, you live near Jetta, so. right? You can you can go call him up, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, Here. yeah. Go over there and tell that bitch to give you just a poster. Take... Or <laughs> to take the ones. Just be like, you know, Ma <laughs> sent you that solo poster, and then you later went on to say that you hated that movie. Can uh, I have that poster, please? Because Ma says I can have it. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Just pound on the door. I, I've never, I've never been to his. I think I have more, but it will save me on shipping. Right. You just right. Go over there and... Well, I, no, I told you because my son and I, we we want to come down to Atlanta anyway, and obviously with Nate and you being in the you know area, I definitely yeah. would like to come down and meet up with you guys anyway. So and cigars well, and bacon we'll, over here too. That that's right. Yeah. So yeah, definitely, okay, cool. definitely, we'll do that. The first thing I hear so. is Harry. Sorry, Harry. Yeah, I'm all the way. All the way, all the way elsewhere. <laughs> hey, my, right. my wife's got family over in California, though. So if I'm ever out there, okay. I might you up. Yeah, you, wait, sure. are you in Nevada or California? I'm in California right now, but I'm going to move to Nevada like next month. So. Oh, well, then I probably won't yeah. see you. And I have, <laughs> I have family in LA. Vegas, so. Yeah, I have family I'm, in the LA area. Yeah, so. I'm probably going to come back here quite a bit anyway. So, yeah. Well, all right, Harold. I won't, but, yeah. All right, yeah, Harold, I won't keep you any longer. You have to then. see you're gonna get us mixed up every time you don't even know what, Harry, what name Harry, to say. Harry, Harry, Harry. <laughs> very similar names, I'm sorry to but say. No. Fact, one's probably a, a, a nickname for the other, but you know, uh, <laughs> right? And, well, my, mine is like a th three generations, but luckily it wasn't a junior or, or a, a number, <laughs> so I'm I'm okay with that. So yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, no, just thanks for having me on and just really thanks appreciate it and had fun hanging out too with Harry. Yeah, I hadn't had sure. a chance to, so. Sure. At least for a long period of time. So no, I just yeah. had a good time. Yeah, and, and Friday we'll get on and do some poses, and uh, I'll okay. have Rex ready, but I don't know if I really want to pose. <laughs> yeah, just that or a clone. Like I said, just one of the the five hundred first. Just do five that. First works. Yeah. Yeah. 
because we right. got the accessories to work with that. So mm -hmm. yeah, I'll set up my other camera, and that way it can just go straight to there. And... Awesome, awesome. Yeah. Cool, and yeah, thanks to everybody in the chat, and just like, comment, share, and right. don't forget to post those pictures in the group too. Yeah, thank you, Harold, so, for coming. All right, man. All right, thank take you, it Harold. easy, guys. Take it easy. take it easy. All right, bye. All right, let me later, man. Let me uh, let me find uh. Holy Christ, that was such a cool thing to find. Let me find... <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm going to be playing with that all night. Oh, my God. It was so easy. You just do like a yeah. radio gradient. I was genuinely like... surprised of how convincing that looked. Oh, there we go. All right. Okay, so that no makes filter more sense this time. Now. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm still sharing. Yeah. Okay. So this yeah, is before he put that whatever effect on it was. Mm -hmm. And then the after. So what were you trying to accomplish here, Mike? That's what I'm curious to find out. I mean, were you just trying to give it more? Because this does look a lot like a, just a toy sitting on a throne. I mean, were you just trying to give it some more of something and not knowing what you're doing yet? Which is fine. Yeah. Um, I actually, I'm liking this one more now that I, I see what you're that you were trying to get something out of it. You know, maybe you're using a JPEG file still, and it, and I actually, I think that's what you were doing, wasn't it? You were trying to increase your contrast and your darks and stuff in a JPEG. It's possible. This is the kind of thing that happens if you do that kind of stuff in a JPEG and not a, a raw file. Raw, yep. And you blast it out too much, you get these hard, grainy things going on. So, I'd be curious to hear your answer on that, Mike Hawes. Uh, exactly that he said from 2020. Yep. Yeah. So, this is this is what happened, guys. Here's a little life lesson: if you're using a JPEG and you're trying to really crunch your lights and darks and stuff because it doesn't have the bit depth as a raw file. Yep. It gets very grainy and nasty looking. Here's the raw before you did all that to it. And from a slightly higher angle. But, you know, still. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I like what you're going for. It was great. But, yeah, I was seeing that and I thought you just threw on some cheap filter effect and not at <laughs> first before I realized what you had done. And I was like, well, that that's not cool. But imagine if this was a raw file and he was able to do this right. I think it would have been yeah. really awesome. Mm-hmm. Do appreciate all you know all the practical effects though. Yes. Yes. Yeah. But yeah, that's a huge difference right there. Oh my god. I think what I need to do is actually I think you or I or both of us need to do some JPEG conversions and so we have the raw and the JPEG right next to each other to show the yeah, actual differences. Okay. Um, yeah. I think my camera's right. still set up to do raw and jpeg i know okay. this one is mm -hmm. i don't think the well, more one two is one problem with me is I'm, I'm shooting with you know a cinema camera so it's a little and you're different. doing all your effects while it's still a cinema format so it's technically yeah. kind of raw yeah um, when i'm you know doing my color grading then it's raw but once yeah. i take that into photoshop that's a jpeg yeah because you haven't taken your your samples from your scenes yet you've yeah. you've graded the entire footage yep those those yep. grading qualities that yep. you've been looking for and then mm -hmm. you do your sample Yep. Uh, by taking that, that JPEG. And so you've yep. already got all your colors done. Yep. Exactly. Um, and all your contrasts and stuff. So, yep, okay. Exactly. Makes more sense now. Yep. Makes a lot more there sense. There you go. <laughs> I remember at the beginning of the show, I was like, well, you could do this with JPEGs and use this in here. Mm. No, no. You, you can't because you're color grading. Nope. That would have squished everything. Yep. Always color grade with raw. It's just, it's just always better. Yes. Raw is better. It's a much bigger yep. file type. Yeah. Uh, it does take up a lot more room on your hard drive, a space. Uh, faster, a lot of space. Um, and I have this problem. I don't think I've deleted any of my old files yet. <laughs> That's my problem, too. All my footage just, is sitting there. Yeah, I don't know if I'm ever yeah. going to want to need to come back to never. that. Never. Like, I I'm always think, like, oh, maybe maybe one day, but then I never do. This is my hoarder mentality right here. Yeah, right? yeah. This is why I got so <laughs> many boxes of crap up in my other room. Where Same. They're literally garbage. Same. Not not garbage, but stuff yeah. that could be thrown away if you really yeah. think about it. <laughs> stuff that I just don't want to part mm -hmm. with, like like a report card from high school. <laughs> okay, no, you, you, you could you could part with that. <laughs> I, I, I know I don't have actually a, a report card, but I know I have a detention slip. With <laughs> okay, that, you should keep. There, yeah, good memories. There, there's a detention slip from junior high. I know that. <laughs> good um, memories, though. But yeah, um, I do need to go through that room because right now it's. It used to be my comic book room, mm -hmm. but now it's become a catch-all for my Hot Toys boxes is another big thing. I can't even walk in this room anymore. <laughs> uh, so, 
I need to clean it up because I'd love to take you guys through the comic book room. You know, yeah, that'd uh, be cool. Be a cool tour. I got I got about thirty long boxes of comic books up there, and Oof. Um, yeah, yeah, that's that's worth something. Well, yeah, considering, you know, I. I don't know if you were here the other day when I was showing off my Fantastic Four or 48. And... Yeah, I don't think I was here yet for that. But definitely worth something. Oh, there he goes. <laughs> but uh, to answer your question, Impulse Nerd, yes, I think they might do something with Obi-Wan. Because, I mean, it's coming up, what, May, I think? So it would probably be smart to show something. All right, I accidentally, I, I don't know what button I'm hitting, but I reached for my coffee and my, the, the heel of my hand touched my mouse. Mm, that makes sense. That makes and sense. I left the room completely <laughs> to reconnect. Like, what in the hell? That makes sense. What is my, what is bleeping? Something's bleeping? Yes, it sounds like something's going crazy, man. I don't know if somebody's tagging me more or what. <laughs> Okay, Mr. Moss, I think I'm going to have to head out. All right, to... we're going to call it for the night. Yeah, that sounds I like gotta, a plan. It is getting have late. Some dinner with the family. Yes, yes. Thank you, uh, Harry, for being here. I appreciate oh, yeah, it. Of course, no. Thank you for having me. Super fun. Just chill out with you guys. Yeah. So, you're excited for Friday? We're going to do some posing? Yes, let's gonna, do some posing. Figures, do some posing. Just rap about yes, yes, whatever yes. while we're posing and yep, have yep. fun. That was super and fun. Then, uh, Saturday, we're going to talk about whatever choice of drops, which yeah, oh, we we're going to talk about that up. for sure. Yeah, we may have to change that up that we'll, because I mean, we'll be able to talk about everything that dropped as we pose. So, who yeah. knows? Yeah, that's true. Uh, that's true as well. Uh, wait, love to see you over there. Where, wait, what? Oh, somebody says, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll get back to that in a second. Let's see. Where are you talking about? My calls, love to see you over where. What is this? And when I started playing in the hobby, I started with it too. Yeah, I, I was over there, for, and I'm still in the group, but uh, they're really kind of crazy about some of their rules, man. I got sick of being hounded by the moderators just, and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, I'm I'm in there. I'm still checking it out. I'm just not posting as much. Uh, Impulse Nerd, man, thanks for being here. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Um, we'll be back Friday for posing. We're, I think we're going to be posing Captain Rex. And uh, Saturday, we're going to just geek out. We're going to do whatever. We're going to talk about whatever we haven't talked about on Friday and just have fun. Yeah. Uh, I don't think I'm going to hold it for a toy talk anymore. I think it's just going to be just whatever, whatever, yeah. you know, because yeah. I don't want to be pigeon held anymore. I'm tired of it, um, <laughs> especially if we're already talking about whatever while we're posing on two, on Friday. It's true. It's true. And why, why force ourselves to rehash what mm -hmm. we just talked about on Friday? Mm -hmm. Unless something new happened. Yep, yep, yep. Um, but anyway, Harry. Thanks for being here, yeah. man. Appreciate it. I'm going to watch no, some more Justified because yeah. I'm on the last season. Ah, yeah. And then okay. uh, by that point, yeah, maybe a that. Book of Boba Fett will be coming on and I'll have more Timothy yep, yep, Oliphant yep. in my life. <laughs> um, Hope so. Uh, anyway. I mean, he's definitely not dead. 100%. No, he's not dead. Yeah. He's not dead. Definitely. So uh, with that, I appreciate you being here, Harry. I really yeah, do. Thank and you for having of course, me. Harold, who's gone, who may still be listening. I appreciate you coming on tonight. And thank you, we'll Harold. see you guys Friday, man. Yeah, and thanks everybody for showing up and just you know listening to us talk. Yeah, super yeah. fun chilling out with you guys. And, and hope you, you guys you know, learn out, something. Go to the description down below. There's a link to Harry and Harold, uh, H Green and Cinema Toy Refer, uh, right down in the description below. Yeah. Thanks guys. Yeah, so hope, much. Uh, hope you guys learned you know something today. You know, I I, I want to be helpful. So hope we you guys we learned something. something. We, we yeah, saw that the, was crazy. Yeah, that, that was, crazy. was crazy. I'm gonna dude. try that out <laughs> for sure. I gotta take a picture before I, I never thought it would be that convincing, but man, that looks we're all gonna be sharing that joke later. We're gonna be like, <laughs> Oh, you used it, didn't you? You used it. Yeah. Hey, look at that. <laughs> all right, guys. Cool. Have a great night. We're gonna take go. It easy. Take it easy. All right. All right. Bye, everybody.